So the GOP Committee on the Weaponization of Government has exposed the U.S. government spying on Trump supporters and more than that, people who bought Bibles. So if you used terms like MAGA or Trump in your transactions in any way, they were tracking you, flagging your purchases and spying on you. This has to be one of the most egregious spying operations that's been, that's been exposed in a long time. It directly targets a political class of people who have done nothing wrong, simply voted for the other guy. This shouldn't be surprising to anybody. Donald Trump said it. They're not after him, they're after you. He's in the way. And that's the reality. It is the people they are going after, and they do not want Trump to win. In fact, I'd argue they're after Trump, obviously, but they are after you as well. So this is a, a absolutely, man... I'm surprised this is where we're at, to be completely honest. And I, I wonder how serious people take the story. But this is huge because to me, it, it reeks of they're likely building a database and profiles of individuals who oppose their establishment order. And this is very, very bad news for people if Joe Biden wins. It is more than just the economy will be bad. We are entering social credit score style systems. If we do not win in this election cycle, it's going to get real bad. But we'll talk about that. We got other really great news. Sean Strickland finally pulled the trigger. We've been waiting for this with the new UFC fight coming up. It's this Saturday, I believe. He's given a press conference and he just rips into the corporate press, into wokeness. He calls wokeness an infection, an enemy. He gets asked about Bud Light and he just goes off. It was beautiful. We will. Uh, uh, in fact, I think he was a little bit too far, but that's OK. We'll call it a big ask. We're going to jump into all that stuff. And uh, the big news, of course, we do have more news. The new uh, uh, Galaxy S24 was announced. And I got to tell you, it's actually terrifying. I'm buying one, you know, uh, just so everyone knows. But it's got this new feature that basically fills in photos through AI, which means you're going to start seeing photographs on social media that are not real. It is now becoming, I know f filters already exist. We get filters exist. We know that filters are fake. You can kind of tell when a filter is being used. But we're talking about taking a picture of a person and moving them slightly. And and people won't notice that's what's going on. This is entering an era where almost every single photo you see that appears to be a candid photo of the real world is actually manipulated or altered in some way. We'll get into all that stuff. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com and pick up Cast Brew Coffee. To help support the show, you can see this beautiful commercial with Alex Stein because we launched Cast Brew Coffee's Alex Stein's Primetime Grind, two times caffeine coffee. It is available at castbrew.com. And uh, drink responsibly. Do not freebase or snort coffee. Drink it the way it's supposed to be drinking. And uh, you can also pick up Appalachian Nights. You know, I was going over sales for Cast Brew and Appalachian Nights sells like 10 times more than anything else. I think we uh, hit one out of the ballpark here. People love Rise with Roberto Jr. That's our breakfast blend. It's a light roast. But once people order Appalachian Nights, they just start ordering it over and over and over again. And sales have just uh, skyrocketed. So I'm really excited. I'm glad everybody really enjoys it. The uh, coffee shop. I have, a, I, I have the correct date for you. It looks like it'll be around June. The shop is open. I know I said April last time. April's when apparently contracting will be near completion. I don't know. But uh, uh, around June should be great. And we hope to see you there up in Martinsburg, West Virginia. So again, Casper.com, but also head over to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member, because this show and all of the crazy things we do are only possible thanks to viewers like you. As a member, you'll get access to the Uncensored Members Only Show coming up at 10 p.m. We do that Monday through Thursday, as well as the Discord server where you can hang out 24-7 with like-minded individuals posting memes, making jokes, and they actually produce content. There's pre-shows, after-shows, all built by the members at TimCast.com of their own volition. If you want to be a part of the community and build culture, go to TimCast.com, click Join Us. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more is Brianna Morello. Hi. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I am Brianna Morello, the host of The Brianna Morello Show. Uh, many of you who do know me, you might be familiar with me a little bit because I was very vocal when I quit Fox News. Uh, I was a Fox Business producer for Maria Bartiromo for a little bit and then moved back to New York City and immediately was told I had to get the vaccine. So I left. And so now I'm in the independent world and it's going well. That's interesting because there were a lot of people claiming that Fox wasn't doing the mandates, but they were. Yeah, they were complying with the New York City private sector mandate. And ultimately, people uh, who were who were saying publicly on the on the network that we weren't complying with any vaccine mandates, there was no va vaccine mandate. Well, now they're coming out and they're changing their tone a little bit, saying that they did get exemptions. Yep. So ultimately, an exemption is you complied with the vaccine mandate. I didn't want to do that. So I bounced. Right on. Yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out. Should be fun. Thank got you. Got a lot to talk about. We got thank Phil you, 
Hello, everybody. My name is Philip Bonte, lead singer of All That Remains, very failed musician, anti-communist, and counter-revolutionary. What's going uh, on, Ian? Oh, you know, I interviewed Mike McCulloch today. This is a British physicist who uh, is developing this theory of quantized inertia, which does away with dark matter. Uh, it's a fascinating interview. The guy's brilliant. I was just following along, trying to make sense of the whole thing. So check it out on YouTube and Rumble. And also, I've got this... Uh, this, this copper coil here, I've been using the Rife machine lately. Royal Rife was an inventor in the 1920s that developed, was using frequency to heal people. So you run frequency through these copper wires and you can amplify the frequency with this modulator and just feel it, man. I it got sounds a bigger, like hippy dippy mumbo jumbo. It sure does. <laughs> and you wonder why the mainstream media the, hasn't pushed this, uh, this vibrational healing process possibility i don't know it's because it's cheap it's relatively cheap and free to do it to yourself well, and you can feel the different frequencies affect you differently it is really wild i i i, I believe you that you can feel them <clears throat> i don't believe that well i guess i shouldn't say anything i don't know anything about well, it i i think, recommend talking to an expert on the rife machine it, it, yeah, who, who we, I, I it's fair to say that you don't believe it off the bat like why would you i would need evidence to believe something like that right so. and, and 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 it's kind of silly because there's a lot of things that doctors might offer you up and you're like, I don't know what that word means. You know, they'll be like, here's a chemical drug prescription. And you're like, I believe you. So yeah, I, I always just defer to medical experts. I will say, I feel like science has a pretty good grasp of electromagnetism. Like we, we understand how that works pretty well. It's so new. We just, it's really we just not discovered new. it like in it's, the 1850s. Uh, no, no, no. The electromagnetic force is not really not, all that new. It's I don't want to get into a debate over this weird stuff that has nothing to do with anything we're talking yeah, about. Not yeah, not before we introduce it. Surge. Yeah, Surge. <laughs> Yo, uh, yeah, stuff vibrates, bro. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show, everybody. I'm excited to do this. My name is Surge.com. Let's jump into it. Here's the story from SCNR.com. U.S. government asked banks to flag private transactions, including MAGA or Trump purchases of Bibles. This is this is this is wild. The U.S. government asked financial institutions to filter private customer purchases using terms, including MAGA Trump, as part of a January 6 investigation. Perhaps most shockingly, they also asked for a warning uh, of purchases of religious texts, including the Bible that could indicate extremism. According to the letter from uh, to the former director of the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, Noah Bischoff, from the House Judiciary Committee and its subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government. House Judiciary Committee Ch uh, Chair Jim Jordan posted the letter on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, writing, we now know the federal government flagged terms like MAGA and Trump. Well, OK, so we, we don't need to read the quote. We know it. Mm -hmm. He also says if you were shopping at Bass Pro Shop, this doesn't seem, uh, in my opinion, like they're just trying to find criminals. It seems more like they are building a profile database. 100%. Yes. They're going to have a list of, uh, uh, look, man, we often joke that Facebook knows when you poop. And the reason I bring that up is because it brings a little levity to, this, levity to the situation. But we are entering the era of pre-crime. You guys ever seen, you've seen my Minority Report, yeah. right? I love this movie because it's like, I think it's a Philip K. Dick uh, 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 novel <clears throat> or story. And then it gets turned into a movie. And the idea is they have, they get, they get lucky. In the D.C. area, they find three psychics and they plug them into a machine and then the psychics can predict murder. The reality is you don't need psychics. You don't need magic. They have built these databases that track what you do, what you say, when you say it. And they are building databases and profiles and predictive machines. And it's not just about whether you've done anything wrong. It's whether or not you are a threat to their proposed order. So the reality here is it's actually quite simple. Are they going to come knock on your door and arrest you because you bought a Bible or went to Bass Pro Shop? No. But uh, are you going to get denied that loan for your small business? Yes. Are you going to get higher points for your uh, on, uh, your interest rates when you, when you try to buy a house? Yes. Are you going to fail when you are, are your kids going to be rejected from certain schools? It's going to be subtle. They're not going to come out right and be like, we reviewed your score and the federal government spying on you, find out, finding out that you went to the Bass Pro Shops. No. They're going to be like, OK, let's try and see if you're available, you're, uh, uh, the loan. Uh, we can get you a loan on that house and you've been denied. And you'll say, why? I'm like, well, you know, it just says you've been rejected. Sorry. Have a nice day. And it's going to be because of things like this. So this made me think of uh, one of the uh, things that I saw right after the uh, an announcement of the, the Iowa caucuses. Joy Reid came right out and said, you know, look at all of those white Christians in Iowa. And is, was just demonizing people because of their religion and because of the color of their skin. There's not, and there's there's no mincing words about it anymore. It is clearly and openly she was, I think she was talking about whether or not uh, people would go for Nikki Haley, and I and I think that 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 was 
the in the con or that's the context of, of mentioning it. But even still, um, you know, the idea that they're talking about people that bought Bibles, you know, they're going to start focusing on religious people and they're going to start making people that have any kind of religion uh, that is not approved by the state. Um, they're gonna you're they're gonna demonize people, and it's not gonna social be social credit score. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's everything. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get pulled over more. So when there's a, a, a people are getting screened at airports, it's gonna be things like this. You're gonna go to the airport, and you're gonna be going through, and they're gonna be like, "You're fine, you're fine." Uh, you uh, the alarm went off. That has, this happened to me during Occupy Wall Street. It happened to uh, James O'Keefe. This is funny. With James, he gets the four S's yeah. on his uh, boarding pass. And then people are like, yo, they're saying you're like a terror threat. That was really funny because, you know, during Occupy Wall Street, when I was traveling, the same thing happened to me. I'd have four S's. And they actually, I, I kid you not, they stole a USB drive from me. and had nothing on it. It's just really weird. That what pissed me off the most about it is that it was really expensive. Back then, these the, like high, like we're talking 10 years ago. If you wanted to get like 128 gigabyte USB flash drive, I mean, these are like $100 plus, super expensive. And so I have it in my bag. I'm going through security. They stop me and say, you've been randomly chosen for a screening. And I'm like, that's not true. It's not random. They pull me off to the side and say, you're gonna have to wait here while we screen you. And I was like, I can't see my bag. And they're like, your bag's fine, sir. Mm -hmm. When I got my bag, expensive USB was gone from it. And they said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's it. So it's going to be things like this. You're going to be trying to go, uh, uh, you know, you're going to walk through, you're going to go to a, a venue. They are constantly going to put roadblocks in your way because the issue is not that they will lock you up as an individual. The issue is they want life to be 5% harder for anyone who supports Trump and 5% easier for anyone who does what they want them to do. And then in the long run, people will move towards the path of least resistance and give in and give them what they want. They'll make you'll make choices every day where you say something like, do I really want to go to Bass Pro Shop? If I do, you know, I'm going to get a social credit score. Ding. I'll just go to the mall or something. You're going to want to buy a Bible. Oh, if I buy a Bible, I'll just I'll just I'm not going to buy one. I'll just see if I can get an old one somewhere else. These are the pressures they're going to put on you so that they can control what you do and what your kids do. Yeah. Yeah. You guys remember Kyle Seraph, an FBI whistleblower who warned us that they were going after Catholics. Now we're seeing this happen on every level of the federal government right now. And it's disturbing, but it keeps happening. And, you know, Christopher Ray will downplay it. The director of the FBI will downplay it and pretend like it's not happening or just like a little slip up. Oh, one person did this, but it's not. It's happening all over uh, the federal government right now. And no one's really stepping in to say much besides, you know, this letter from Jim Jordan, thankfully. But what will happen? We don't know. Well, Bass, I wonder if Bass uh, Pro Shop will even weigh in on this or if they'll even go after them because ultimately they're harassing their their customers and that affects their line of business doesn't that yeah they, i don't i don't imagine yeah they're, they're gonna shut they're not gonna say anything at all they're gonna shut their mouths yeah. they don't want to draw they don't want to draw attention bass pro shop needs to file a lawsuit and be like hey man yeah like we're gonna lose money because of this yeah they they want to be spied on what, it's a fishing shop yeah you never been to bass pro shop no oh, i got everything missed the video i got well because they have guns probably is yeah. why they're spying on people yeah oh yeah, yeah. That's why mm -hmm. most of us pay cash these days. Man, I've been. I don't think that matters. I know they'll still find yeah. you. I, 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 I've been seeing this coming, and in, in the age of quantum computers with quantum encryption hacking, they're going to be able to break encryption real easy and like go back for the last twenty years of your encrypted stuff, and then make that stuff in in a database too. It's a part of why I don't type a lot about politics on the internet. I don't like it in text. I'd rather it just be. A, I speak it with my voice. Of course, artificial intelligence is going to be able to pick up video chat and talking and stuff, but. It's I've, I have self censored righteously I think like I don't want to I don't want to virtue signal my political beliefs and text I it's almost like I just I've seen the writing on the wall I know that this technocracy is 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 knocking at the door right now knocking at the door I think we're through the door yeah, already it's it's they've been inside the house for a while but they're a still knocking plus. like there's more than one of them I mean that, we're we're going on almost two decades now 2024 this all starts in the social media era. Yeah. In the 2000s. Yeah, that's Patriot the, Act. That's my concern. That's what the thing I'm most scared about is 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 the the idea that all of the things that you need for like a digital prison or whatever are already in place and already turned on before people even realize it. Like with the the whole thing with AI, like if AI becomes aware of itself before people are aware, you know, like that kind of 
that kind of situation where like it just kind of happens like everyone got their phones like plugged into their into themselves like you didn't realize that you were going to get addicted to it but everyone just kind of did and now you're dealing with the consequences and i'm afraid that's going to happen again something that kind of has worked me up and freaked me out is when klaus schwab about three months ago said the biggest threat to the new world order is libertarianism and I was like, what the hell? What is he? All Freedom. of a sudden, it's right in plain sight. They're like, this is, we finally said the thing that for 20 or 30 years you've been, f that we've been pretending like we're not saying that Amer libertarianism, was that like an American political just, no, it's ideology? Just liberty. It's just, just it's it's the, the purest uh, individual first kind of political philosophy that you can come up with, I think, is probably a good it, way to say it. it. It's older than this new technocracy, so I don't see how this old methodology could be a threat to something new. The new thing has the burden of proof on it. it. It has the burden of requirement to show that it's better than what we had before. The past can't threaten the future. Well, it's not even the future, though. All the stuff they're talking about, collectivism, these are not new ideas. These are very old ideas. The problem is it relies on electricity. All this stuff relies on electricity. All this whole technocracy, this whole global spying endeavor. If the power goes out, we're back to like grassroots. Yeah, but I mean, either the impulses that they have, like the, the kind of like, you know, centralized top-down power centralization stuff like that doesn't need electricity they did that in the soviet union with like when it first became the soviet union they were there was no it was a peasant you know they were all farmers and agrarian they didn't go through the the normal uh you know capitalism and then to socialism or the the I, what marx said marx said that it was be capitalism and socialism they jumped from like the stone age to like modern times so, so like and they were very brutal and like monarchies are known for being very, at least past in the past, very brutal. If you spoke out against the king, get your head cut off kind of thing. So I don't like, know it, that they really are known for that. I think no. that there were some that were, but that I don't know that I'm sure that, or there were plenty of benevolent dictators and, and, you know, they also wrote the history books, so they're not going to write themselves to look like evil villains, but like the, the, the electricity maybe is what keeps central authority peaceful. And if the electricity goes out, then they have no choice but to rule by force. Th Thailand still has Les Majesté laws. What's that? If you disparage the royal family in any way, you get locked up. Even, mm. you can, mm. even if you're quoting someone else to criticize the criti criticism of the king. So like, if you said something like, did you hear what that man said? He should be jailed for saying the king is stupid. Oh, you said the king is stupid. You're under arrest. Oh, you can't, even just forming the no, words. Well, that's what, that's what I was told. And, and people in the country were very scared to, they were like, you can't even criticize the, the phrase. You can't say, mm. How dare someone say the king is stupid? That's what that's what I was told. That's how serious the law is. But uh, man, back when I was this like ten years ago, they loved the king. Now I don't know because that it was King Pumipon. It was now, a different king. Well, now it's his son, and his son was considered to be like we we did. It was really funny because we did a documentary in uh, uh in Thailand about the king and how he's beloved. He did a lot to help raise the uh, literacy rates and pull people out of poverty. So as much as there were people, it was funny because there were groups that were protesting monarchy and wanted a parliamentary system. I think they have one, but they wanted to get rid of the monarchy. And they were like, all of the leaders that I met were like, the king's so awesome, but it's just time for a modern era. That's the only deal we have. And then there were some people privately be like, I hate the like more leftists and more like, you know, ugh. but then when the uh, prince was taking over. And he's like seen on video, like flying somewhere, wearing hot pants and like doing drugs and other weird <laughs> crazy. Yeah, right. It's like a Hunter Biden. I, I literally like Hunter Biden. Then people were just like, OK, wait a minute. So we made this documentary and when we tried releasing it. We actually had to structure. I got it. I got a script I was reading. And then after we finished, they come back to me and they're like, we need to reread this line for the documentary because we we insinuate that there are people who called the prince a bad name. And this could get people in Thailand thrown in prison. So there's another way to phrase it. Instead of saying he's a drug addled moron, say people view him as weaker than the demigod father that he has. And I was like, are you kidding me? And they were like, better we, safe than sorry. We yeah. really want to criticize the guy. And so that's how we do it. And then we can get and then the it's, it's, it's a challenge because the documentary then got massive play in Thailand. They all wanted to watch it. And they said, if you insult the prince, no documentary sees the light of day. If you say, it was something like, you can watch it and you can find this line where it's like, he is not the demigod that, that his father is, is viewed to be or whatever. Like that's the best criticism is that he is but normal man. 
Sure, I guess. Then yeah. <laughs> all of the talk of loyalty and, and political loyalty and stuff, I'm, I'm like, I, I don't understand, I guess, the perspective of the people that are that appreciate monarchy or that want it. Like I, a lot of I'm like, yo, yo, in England, like down with the monarchy. Like, let's start. Let's start a democratic republic in England. Let's do it. Now's the time. Well, but the let's do it in Thailand. Let's but the do monarchy it. in the monarchy in England. Like they don't actually have any like significant yeah. legislative power and they're a net benefit uh, to the economy. But the king, I, I disagree. The king can disband parliament. Yeah. The uh, and the king uh, approves the royal family app uh, approves the prime minister. I think I think it would be, be naive to assume that when the, there was the, what was it, the Civil War in the UK, I'm not big on UK shit, but they had like yeah. a Civil War and then they're like, okay, 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 we got we to gotta split power and create the House of Commons and let people have some say in this. Yeah. All that was was the king being like, how do we prevent a revolution where we get our heads chopped off? Let's tell them whatever they want to hear. We actually will still control the reins of power and uh, everyone's got to pay the royal family. The royal family is super wealthy, super rich. I, 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 I firmly believe Behind the scenes, the king, the queen, the royal family can do whatever they want, whenever they want, and control everything. It's like saying the Clintons have no real power. The Clintons to this day are still orchestrating things behind the scenes and, 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 uh, uh, and, and putting massive pressure. So I'll put it this way. To the people who are like, the monarchy has no real power. It's like, do you think Obama has power right now? He was an elected guy. Now he's not in office. No, everyone still thinks he's pulling the strings. So don't, come on. The royal family's pulling strings. Some people say the Obamas are the most protected Americans on earth. Like they're the ones. They're the the power family on earth is the Obamas. Of people perhaps, say, perhaps. Not, not let's uh, let's 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 advance the story and jump to this one. This is from the Daily Mail. This blew my mind. My friends, Donald Trump's lawyer requested the court case between Trump and E. Jean Carroll be adjourned temporarily so that Trump could go to the funeral of Melania's mother. And the judge said no. This has to be one of the most vile and disgusting things I have seen in a long time. If you want to know how depraved and evil these people are, the idea that the judge would say to Trump, you can choose to be in court, which is your right, or go to the funeral of your wife's mother. You pick. Absolutely disgusting. And uh, he, he, he said no. There will be denied. And he even yelled at uh, uh, Trump's lawyer. Check this out. The ex-president's attorney's plea was denied by Judge Lewis Kaplan in the tense exchange before the columnist took the stand to testify in the $10 million defamation case. Abba fired back, initially refusing to sit down. Basically, what happens is she asks for a uh, 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 basically an adjournment just for the day so we can go to the funeral. She told the court Trump had an unexpected death in, a in our family, which only the Lord can control. Habba said it was insanely prejudicial for Trump to have to choose between the funeral and attending court. She said, quote, I'm asking your honor to have the kindness my client deserves to be with his family tomorrow. Judge Kaplan shot back. Indeed, the right that he has, according to the Supreme Court of the United States, is the right to be present either in person or by counsel, and nobody is stopping him from doing either. The application is denied. I will hear no further argument on it. Habba protested, saying, your honor. But the judge responded, I said, sit down. Habba did not sit down. It said Abba before, but Habba. Judge Kaplan asked her what else she wanted to ask. She said, look at these typos all over the place. I said, I don't, uh, she, she said, quote, I don't like to be spoken to in that way, your honor. I am asking your honor to please refrain to, from speaking to me in that way. It's denied. Sit down. This is, I'll say it again. Kaplan is an evil man. He is a disgusting slime bag. These people are evil. There's no question in my mind. I, I, I look at this kind of stuff. We see it every day. It's one thing when you are fighting for political power and you think you're right and you're an authoritarian. We can have our political uh, arguments, political battles, and these things have happened throughout, his, th throughout history. But when you see a judge with a smile on his face say you will not have the opportunity to, to go to the funeral for a dead family member, these people are emotionless, vile scumbags. They say all these things about Trump. There's a meme right now. Uh, I forgot who tweeted it, so I, I apologize for not giving credit. But they say they've arrested Trump supporters. They have put them in solitary confinement, effectively torturing them. They have brought the pres former president up on numerous criminal charges, falsely accused him of things he's never done 30 years ago, are trying to strip him of his assets in New York, have dissolved his corporations, at, all while screaming, you're fascists. Mm -hmm. These people are like, Trump must be stopped. 
he's a fascist. He will do so many horrible things to this, to this country. This woman, E. Jean Carroll, I mean, the, the, the transcript of the court case is absolutely insane. There was one moment where Trump's lawyer tried to, or, uh, called for a mistrial because E. Jean Carroll admitted to deleting evidence. And the judge said, shut up. I don't care. I'm paraphrasing. I don't know. That I, I will pull up the verbatim quote. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I can put all that stuff aside. OK, if the judge is biased and saying, yes, we know she deleted emails and texts or whatever, but I'm not going to grant you a mistrial because he's biased. Fine. He's a jerk. This denial is just like taking a dump on the floor of what it means to be a human. It's it's t it's taking a dump on like the whole like justice system, the yeah. whole idea of our uh, of our like government system, the like the whole using government to prosecute or persecute your political enemies, opponents and stuff no, dude, supposed to be like, dude, there's, there's I, I, no I understand this. I understand someone being like, I want power and then trying to throw someone in prison. There, there, there is no winning argument here other than the judge wants you to know that if you are in line with Trump, they yeah. will do the most inhumane things. This is just the beginning. Okay. Like Malice is right. They'll, dude. they'll kill your kids at, like and smile about it and, and think they're doing the right thing. They look at currently the people that are like in in charge in the government, the people that kind of set the tone for what is, is and is not politically correct. They hate the people that are outside of their political group. They and they really want to do bad things. They want to use the government to oppress them. And there's not two ways about it. You look at what the way they're treating the J J6 people, you know, the people that didn't actually get into fights or whatever. They've got hundreds of people they arrested and stuff. There's not any debate about it. The, the real scary thing isn't what they're doing. It's the fact that other Americans are just allowing it. Yeah, it's uh, ruthless. This behavior is ruthless. And I don't normally see that coming from the judicial system. I, I didn't think I was going to see that coming from the judicial <laughs> system in the United States. You want to, you know, you got to have... You got to have like uh, forgiveness or like at least like what's the opposite of ruthlessness? Compassion. Like yeah. you're supposed to mix compassion with law, at least on in at some... least feign it. I am an impartial judge. But like ruthlessness yeah, Trump, will you you should go to the funeral of your family because I'm a good guy. No, he's just like, I'm evil. Like th <laughs> there's definitely a time and a place to be ruthless, but that overdoing it will make people hate you. And it, it'll Sociopaths cause a lot of animosity. Don't care when when people like Kaplan. I'm not saying him personally, but people like him go and say, like, kill a dog for fun and then smile about it and want people to watch. They're psychotic individuals. I mean, in the literal sense, this man is a sociopath who wants everyone to know that he revels in causing human misery. Yeah. There's also no consequences to any of this, right? Like he could do whatever he wants. There's really no penalties for him on this front. And it's so interesting because E. Jean Carroll's accusations were really only brought forward because New York manipulated their law and created like this exemption for any woman to come forward or male too to come forward and make sexual assault ac accusations. Do you know? It was like a one year amnesty where yeah. any, any sexual assault that was beyond the statute of limitations, they would get one year to bring those charges up. And then after that, it's too late. It's literally for this. And yep. it was specifically for the... Well, we, I think any sane person can yeah. realize they did it specifically for this. As soon but as the their argument filed. is like, because of the Me Too era, yeah. we're going to do this. Yeah. Then she comes out. I think, I think it's, in my opinion, any reasonable person who hears what she says will conclude that she is a crackpot whack job. Yeah. Who uh, she even says, She's according to some reports, when she realized her book wasn't selling... She used the opportunity in the story to try and push the book on various shows. She's the one that said that like women like to be raped or something like rape that. Rape is something, sexy. Yeah, something. Not crazy. that women said people think rape is sexy. Think uh, about the okay. fantasies. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was. With and then the, they were like, "Let's go to a commercial." Uh, yeah, Anderson, Anderson Cooper. Yeah, Anderson was like, "Yeah, uh. go to commercial break." They never do that for anyone, by the way. They just wanted to keep her credibility going. It's like cut it to a commercial and, and break. And let's let's not forget the court case where she accused Trump had a juror who had watched an episode of Timcast IRL. And that was the basis for an attempt of di uh, attempted dismissal. I don't believe he was dismissed. It's been a long time. Oh. But that was big news. Like, for some reason, like everyone wrote about it. It was like, juror in Trump trial is fan of Timcast IRL or something. And I think he said, like, he saw an episode or two. And I'm like, what? That's it? Shame on him. <laughs> yeah. That's not a big fan.
a couple episodes. Jeez. Yeah, it's watch like 30 or 40 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. New York City is actually trying to extend the, the, the statute of limitation now. So now they, they're trying to give like a two year exemptions for women to go file these complaints. And it's crazy because it's backing up the civil court mm -hmm. system now in New York. No one's stepping in saying, hey, this is a little crazy, guys. Anyone could make an accusation from 30 years ago and without any evidence, come forward and we just have to believe it. Uh, ultimately, though, also, they refer to Carol as a journalist in a lot of these articles. I think it's so comical because uh, people like me, for an example, we're conspiracy theorists, but this woman who said at one point that rape is sexy and who literally her whole Twitter page at one point was dedicated to bashing Trump as a journalist now all of a sudden. It's kind of weird. What is she? Yeah, this is uh, like... I think she was an actress at one these point, These stories are all over the place. The <laughs> juror who listened to conservative podcaster Tim Pool. Here's the AP. Journalist, juror who listened to conservative podcaster Tim Pool joined verdict against Donald Trump. They tried to get him out, remove him, and he just went along with it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what, you know, the craziest thing to me is when these like sexual assault claims pop up 30 years later and people get convicted on it. I'm like, what evidence do not they fair. have? I'm, there's yeah. DNA evidence, like by all means, but evidence of sex is not evidence of rape. Yeah, yeah. You're seeing P. Diddy. He's being smacked around with all these lawsuits now. And ultimately, I'm okay with sexual assault like lawsuits coming about if there was a criminal case that came first and they were found guilty in the courtroom. But now we're just we're fast forwarding, going straight to, to civil. And unfortunately, it's because he, he actually, P. Diddy actually filed, well, settled his lawsuit with Cassie, his ex-girlfriend, so quickly that three more, I think it's three more accusations popped up right after that. And so now he's got to battle these three accusations. And there's really, I mean, there's very little evidence that you could bring forward to even prove your innocence. You're ultimately guilty. I think he didn't show up to for the Emmys or something he was invited to just because of all these accusations. So unfortunately, all these people are going to be found guilty in the public eye, even though they haven't had a criminal trial. Yeah, the idea of proving yourself innocent is counterintuitive. You're yeah. supposed to have to prove the other person guilty. They are innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it disgusting? But this is the world we're turning into and everyone's okay with this. Actually, it, it actually bit one New York Democrat in the butt. Uh, Chris Cuomo, uh, Andrew Cuomo, sorry. Andrew Cuomo actually got a lawsuit filed against him for sexual harassment. by Well, he admitted staffer. to doing it. <clears throat> oh, did he? He, he made a video showing all the times he grabbed people and kissed them and said, because I'm Italian. Uh, and I'm like, so you admit to kissing people who did not want to be kissed. Um, well, okay, sir. That like when he got me too. Yeah. He was like, I'm Italian. I kiss everybody. Here's a video of me doing it over and over and over again. And we're like, so Shoot yourself that, in the foot. that's just admitting you're doing it. Yeah. Is, you know I mean? is it because it's a civil course that you don't have to provide guilt? You don't have to prove yes, guilt? Yes, it's liability, yeah. not not guilt. And what is liability technically? They, so Trump was never found to have sexually assaulted this woman, though that's what everyone is saying yeah. he is found to be liable for a sexual assault what does that mean it means he has like liability you, you a debt an, uh, something you owe for something that may or may not have happened yeah yeah i think any sane person who heard the story told by e jean carroll would conclude that she is a crackpot who made it up it's it's uh she accused les moonvis and donald trump of sexually assaulting her in the mid 1990s that's what this is i don't know who this les moonvis guy is i don't know that she even uh, accused him of sexual assault did she that's what Wikipedia says. I thought she said that she brought him up, like they went to the Berg, Berg was it the Bergdorf or whatever? I don't know, whatever the place is called. Hotel. And they went upstairs, and the story is really remarkable because it's like Trump owns the hotel across the street. He's the most famous guy in New York. He comes in here, nobody stops him, nobody recognizes him. There were no people in the building for some reason. The changing rooms that were normally locked for some reason were open. We don't know why. And that's where it took place. You know what else is really crazy about this? Like, seriously, seriously, it's, 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 what are we talking about? 30 years later. And they're like, yeah, Trump's liable for this. Mm -hmm. Trump denies it outright. What evidence do you have? Any of this ever happened? None. Think about how crazy it would be if some guy just dressed up like Donald Trump did this. And then 30 years later, like it was Trump. And like, what are you supposed to say? <laughs> no, it was the it, imposter. Well, like, how does this, you know what, you know what it's okay. Maybe this lady's telling the truth, but it wasn't Trump. It was just some other tall guy. She thought was Trump because she's a crackpot. Uh, I think. Uh, if it was anyone else, I don't think this would even, I don't think he would have been found to be liable. I it's, think that it's, it's, it's all because it's Trump. Yeah. I think it's fairly obvious. They are just doing everything they can. Uh, actually, let me, let me do this. I, I want to show you why they do this and I'll, and I'll break it down for you uh, with a tweet. It's, it's really remarkable. Uh, let me see if I can pull this one up. Let me scroll down a little bit. And uh, it's from earlier in the day. And uh, here we go. Take a look at this tweet from NBC News. Live updates. Writer E. Jean Carroll will testify in the second damages trial against former President Trump, who was found to have sexually abused and defamed her last year. You see how they wrote that? 
Yeah. The implication, of course, being that last year, Donald Trump sexually assaulted a woman. Oh, geez. Read it. You see how NBC News wrote it, right? Mm -hmm. Was found to have sexually abused and defamed her last year. Yeah, it should say who was, last comma, year, last year, comma, found to have abused her. Yeah. And if you want to be, if you actually want to write real news, you would say, writer E. Jean Carroll will testify in the second damages trial against former President Trump, who was found in a trial last year to have sexually abused her in the 1990s. Yeah, Dude, this is NBC, man. That's gruesome. NBC, Clarity. that's not surprising. They are the most evil propaganda uh, um, smear merchants that we have. Their whole, their whole disinformation news team, where even 538, Nate Silver, a bunch of other journalists and J, like J school professors constantly call out the NBC news team because they actually fabricate things mm -hmm. and win awards for doing it. And then people are like, this is remarkable. They're Cl just outright lying all the time. Clarity and accuracy are supposed to be things that they go for. Like that's supposed to be the 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 point of of journalism and news is so that way they can make things, you know, understandable for the average person and they do nothing of the sort. Let me anymore. let me show you this story from a post millennial. Trump dares judge an E. Jean Carroll defamation case to kick him out of court. He actually did. So uh, the judge says, Mr. Trump, I hope I don't have to consider excluding you from the trial. I understand you are probably very eager for me to do that. Trump said, I would love it. I would love it. Waving his hands. I can yeah. imagine he's going like this with his hands. I know you would because you just can't control yourself in this circumstance. Trump says, you can't either. The threat came after Carroll's attorney, Sean Crowley, had raised issue with Trump speaking loudly, potentially loud enough to be heard by the jury. The, the court is not allowing Trump to provide evidence that she is likely lying. Yeah. So like with Alex Jones, this is what they do. They create a fake reason why this is said and done. You get no chance to defend yourself. And the, the trial you're actually allowed to argue is how much money do you owe? So with Alex Jones, they said he defamed these families. Jones's a legal team said Alex never actually called them out by name. He was vaguely referring to people in these cases. And what happens is the court said, turn over these documents. They do. The court says, okay, turn over the documents. And Alex goes, I did. And I said, no, you didn't. Well, here are the documents again. Then the court says, if you don't turn over those documents, we're going to hold you in default. And so Alex's legal team goes, here are the documents. Here's all of them. Here's everything. And they go, well, you didn't give us the documents. Default judgment. Bang. That's what happened to Alex Jones. So when they actually went to trial, the trial we saw was, they, was, they, uh, 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 was to determine the amount Alex would owe. You didn't know that, Phil? No, I didn't. Jones know. never had a trial as to whether or not he defamed the family. I didn't know that he gave them the paperwork three times and they probably just more than said that. no. They, they kept saying you're excluding documents. You're not giving, giving us what we asked for. And Alex kept saying, I've given you everything. I have nothing else to give. And they said summary judgment for, for the plaintiffs. Alex Jones, the next court uh, case we're going to have is how much money you owe. I had no So idea. every time we watched a video clip of Alex arguing, he would say something like, I didn't do that. Uh, stop. You've already been found liable. You cannot deny the accusation. Now, wow. as to what we were saying, this is the game they're playing. You take a look at what they're doing in the fraud case for, for Donald Trump in New York City. The goal here is to strip him of all of his assets. Yeah. They dissolved his company. They ruled that it's, it's done. Summary judgment. Trump committed fraud. Over. No defense. Donald Trump will not get a chance to defend himself and prove his innocence. No matter what anyone says from this point, the court has already determined that Trump has committed fraud. Now. The court case we're going to have is, did he forge business documents and how much does he owe and what will the damages be? So then when Trump brings in financial institution experts and things like that who say, not only did we make a lot of money and not only did Donald Trump do this, literally everyone does it and everyone is happy with it. They go, that's fine. It doesn't matter. We've already determined that he is liable for this. He's guilty. So your, your testimony is meaningless because we are not here to determine the guilt of Donald Trump. We've already determined that. That's what they're doing here. So Trump telling the judge, speaking out and yelling against him. I mean, we are we are already at this point. I was talking to a lawyer uh, a, a year, two years ago, maybe about filing a lawsuit. And what they said was, uh, OK, what state you're filing in? You file it in Maryland, you'll lose. Democrat judges are going to laugh you and laugh at your face. I said, West, West Virginia. And they go, oh, OK, yeah, West Virginia, you'll win because conservative judges will will agree with you. And I was like, that's really it, isn't it? Like, oh, venues, everything. It used to be, it, it always mattered. So you'd figure out what's the best venue for the lawsuit, uh, where you have, you, have to have, you, have, you have to have standing, they have to have the right jurisdiction, and then you want to find a place where you're likely to get a good judge who will agree with your arguments. 
Nowadays, it's civil war, baby. I'm saying that figuratively, yeah. but it's basically like if you are trying to sue a Democrat in a Democrat state, you you're going to lose. Just no question. You walk in and you're going to be like, I have video evidence of this guy smashing my car with a sledgehammer screaming. I am doing this for no reason and, and I will never pay you back for it. And the judge will go, interesting. And you'll say, the guy who did it is wearing a, a Biden sh shirt and I'm wearing a Trump hat. He's going to be like, you know, I just think that there's more to the story. So I'm going to dismiss the case. That's basically the way the game is played now. Yeah. So don't bring up politics. I don't think there's anything you can do about it. Don't yeah, because it. The, as, as soon as if you get picked up for anything, the DA is going to start looking through your history. And well, that's criminal. Your... Yeah. Yes. But in, in and, and so what happens there is like in D.C. with the J6ers. Good luck facing down a D.C. Yeah. far left jury. You could prove definitively. I mean, come on. Jack Posobiec gets punched by an Antifa guy. Yep. Police witness it. And then the Antifa people, people go, I didn't see anything. Nothing happened. Yep. You can you'll, you will have a jury of your peers in D.C. <laughs> and they're all liberals. And there can be a video of you not of, of you proving your innocence. And then they're going to be like, but he's a Trump supporter. And they're going to beg he's guilty. Mm -hmm. Lock him up. We don't care. The prosecutors don't even file charges in those incidents. I mean, even over this weekend when we saw in, out in front of the White House, I mean, protesters, the pro-Palestine protesters were literally threatening to break into the White House and shaking the fence to get in and Secret Service is on the other and side pushing it back. Insurrection. Zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, zero. Uh, Border Hawk reported, too, that there was an individual who pulled a knife and that person, zero, still no arrest, no arrest. And the no DOJ didn't arrest. respond when I reached out. They don't care. It's no. just it's just different venues. They just don't care. Yeah. You, if you are, if you have the right politics, you can get away with almost anything and yeah. republicans are so are just so weak yeah they don't. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry dude like th th this is why they say far right and extremist because republicans are are basically like the democrats gimps yeah and the democrats are dragging them by the collar mm -hmm. i'll give you an example uh simple question and and i know phil knows the answer to this phil does the second amendment protect the right of children to keep and bear arms he is nodding yes. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought you were asking for, for other <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, yes, of course it does. Yeah, the, yes. the answer is yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, children have always had guns. Mm -hmm. And the issue now is not whether or not they keep, keep and bear arms, but parental supervision. Mm -hmm. This is what happened with Kyle Rittenhouse. The law said that as a minor, he was allowed to keep and bear certain guns. Certain other guns are regulated. The issue of regulation that's been found in the Supreme Court is that regulating which weapons you can carry is not an infringement on your constitutional rights. Meaning... Children do have the right to keep and bear arms. However, the Supreme Court recognizes restrictions on how and when they can keep and bear arms. The next question, do private individuals, uh, or I should say this, does the Second Amendment guarantee the right of the private individual in the United States to keep and bear nuclear weapons? Yes. The answer is yes, because who do you think makes them? It is large private corporations that manufacture all of these missiles and warships and drones. The drones carrying the Hellfire missiles, they're not made by the government. They're made by private corporations who own them and sell them to the government. The Second Amendment protects all of that. So when people are like, the Second Amendment never protected your right to hold cannons. What are you talking about? Boeing's got dr Hellfire missiles. Uh, is, is it Boeing that makes the uh, the Reaper drone? Who makes the Reaper drone? Lockheed? I don't Lockheed know. Martin. I mean, is it Lockheed? I think all, so. all I know is like, dude. It's the military industrial complex producing all these weapons and under uh, uh, corporate law, they are private citizens. They are private persons for the purpose of ownership. Which yeah, like they, they build General Atomics that builds the, the General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper. There's the a Reaper. lot of times where the military will go to a company and be like, look, this is a, a, a goal that we have or a machine that we want you to build. But also there's a lot of times where like the private sector will build something yeah. and present it to the DOD and be like, check out this gadget that we came up with. And the DOD is like, check out these dollars we just printed here. The, Take the, them. the point here is that I can talk to even the most ardent of Republican Congress people and they will say, no, I, I don't think people should have the right to keep and bear nuclear weapons. And I'm like, OK, so we can start by shutting down the capability of any private corporation for building a nuke. Only under strict government control can weapons be manufactured. Like, let's look, because we look, obviously, nuke is extreme. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, the way you go about it, the, the, anyone who, who uh, we, whenever we have someone who's like a gun manufacturer, or a gun shop owner, FFL, they're like, yeah, there's a form you can fill out for when you're making a weapon if it's a nuclear weapon or not, because mm -hmm. corporations do this. So, okay, the idea there uh, would be if the Second Amendment only protects the keeping and bearing of arms, like small guns and stuff, we got to shut down Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, et cetera. All of them just shut down overnight. Or nationalize them. That means all your precious stock is gone and worthless. Should we nationalize? Well, I guess they'll buy you out. 
But do we want to nationalize these uh, these military industrial co complex companies? No, we don't. Yeah. So uh, unless any of these individuals in Congress think we should, then they absolutely agree. The Second Amendment protects those rights. My point is this. Republicans are Democrats gimps. They're on leashes being dragged around. And it's fascinating when we have even Freedom Caucus individuals come in on this show and they don't know these things. And I'm like, if you're taking the approach that private, the Second Amendment doesn't protect nuclear weapons, you are basically in the middle. You are a, you are a moderate leftist in terms of constitutionalism. And there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm right wing on the Second Amendment. And I'm like, no, you're not. And uh, we had someone on the show who was like, I will not be out Second Amendmented by Tim Pool or whatever. It was really funny. <laughs> I think it was a member. I can't remember who it was. Maybe you guys listening do. But this is my point. When it comes to what we know they are doing with the like the insurrection in front of the White House that just happened this past weekend, mm -hmm. trying to rip down the barricades, pulling a knife or even the 529 insurrection. My point and why I bring this up is that Republicans right now could launch an investigation committee into the insurrection at the White House today and yeah. say, what is going on with this? And they have the perfect backdrop. Pro Hamas protesters. Yeah. Now, of course, you could uh, make the argument they're not really. My point is this. The J6 protesters weren't insurrectionists, but they say they are. Why aren't Republicans coming out right now, passing all these resolutions, putting together committees saying we must investigate the pro Hamas cells of far left extremists that have just attacked the White House because they're weak and they will be weak. And even the ones that you think are good are still middle of the road it, it's a lot of the republican party as a holdover from when the republicans were the war machine the military industrial complex arm with the uh -huh. george bush jr era and then obama came in and they all kind of went over to that democratic party um so that's i think that's why a lot of the older people are still like beholden to the military industrial uh -huh. complex i mean the, the country is like a militocracy it's been it's just like an arms dealer this country is like we export military equipment and and dollars backed by our military and what else wheat sugar flour and oil that's about it no well we, i mean we we export a whole lot more stuff corn than just that there's we export a lot more than that culture we don't, yeah we don't we don't export as much as we used to but we definitely export way more than just like a handful of things i want to jump to the story we do not have all bad news we have good news here from the post-millennial, Maine Superior Court orders Trump back on the ballot pending SCOTUS ruling. So this is good news. Trump has been allowed, allowed back on the ballot in Maine thanks to the state's Superior Court. On Wednesday, the court issued a stay of Maine Secretary of State Shanna Bellow's move to prevent Trump from being a candidate, arguing that no decision should be made until the Supreme Court of the U.S. has handed down its ruling. According to Fox News, in addition to staying Bellow's ruling, the court denied Trump's motion to supplement the record and stay proceedings. So... So the matter has remanded to Bellows for further proceedings as necessary in light of the U.S. Supreme Court's forthcoming decision in Trump v. Anderson, the case against the former president in Colorado that also seeks to keep him off the ballot there. I think the big risk right now and the reason why they're doing it right now. Trump may win all of these. But how much do you want to bet come Super Tuesday, many states, California, for instance, take him off the ballot yep. and they make the argument this is not the general election. No one's interfering in the general election. But Trump is off the ballot and Nikki Haley wins. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. that happened, there might be the first time we ever see a write-in candidate win. Some, uh, uh, I, mean, I, I, I got to look more into this, but I'm hearing that like Virginia's trying to get away with the, uh, they're trying to pass a bill that makes it so you can't write in a name. <laughs> I got to look into that one. I got to verify that one. Yeah, well, I think they're trying to print the ballots before the Supreme Court ruling comes down because I think they want to just say, oh, we, we got, can't do it now. We can't go back now. And, and yeah, that's going to be the big it's, issue. It's too late. It's uh, 90 days. And so, uh, you know, look, we, we, we made the ballots. You're going to fortify the crap out of the election already. We yeah. already know they're doing it. They yeah. wrote the NBC News article they're saying absolute. that they're, they're, they're planning to uh, stop Trump again. They are absolutely trying to do everything they can to fix the election. There's n This is not going to be a free and fair election. They will do anything at all to to fix the election to defend democracy they're so <laughs> they're so, and like everybody garbage. that believes them you are so dumb yeah it's like, like a red flag when someone says that it's so bad it, it is it really is and it's 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 painful to watch you know people that you you're friends with or that like you you used to respect or whatever and they're just like yeah man this, this is fine you know he's after our democracy and it's like oh so you're gonna take him you should take him off the uh off the 
the ballot? Yeah, that's how you save democracy. Okay, all right. The, the one I get is when they're like, Trump's a fascist. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, this whole country's fascist. Let's just get that out of the way, <laughs> man. We got the Federal Reserve in our back. Like, well, that's that's it's worse than... Uh, the Federal Reserve is worse than fascism. It's something different. Like, at least with fascism, they're standing in front of you telling you they're doing it. They're yeah. doing it, you know what I mean? The Federal Reserve is basically like, behind the scenes, no one pays attention, and it's shadow regulating, controlling how you can live your life. Yeah, it's, it's beyond corporate. Yeah, fascism's too specific, right? The reference to... We need new words for these things. I think technocratic, but claiming that the Federal Reserve is technocratic doesn't quite make sense. When they go digital, if they go digital, when they go digital, that, that central bank digital currency, I hope that they could shut down, but that's about as technocratic as I've ever seen. Something like that would be like, oh, this is a technocracy trying to take hold. But we need to keep maintain our republic. Yeah, that's the thing. It's really funny because in the uh, in the, the statements that come from... Um, what was I reading? I was reading a statement from some Republican. They said, our republic. And when you read a statement from a Democrat, they say, our democracy. All the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you know, I was thinking about it because I did a segment today and I kind of, I don't think I was articulate enough in what I was trying to explain, but I was thinking about a better way to explain it. It's really simple. A republic is when a guy from your state argues to neighboring states and to the federal government your view, your, your region's view on how uh, your, like how your laws should be how the greater laws should affect your state or your city or whatever. And that the federal government has limited control or access to what happens in your state. A democracy would be everyone in New York voting on what Wyoming gets to do with their water. So in a direct democracy, the system they want, Chicago will vote. The people of Wyoming must leave. In a republic, the people of Wyoming laugh, you know, cock their guns and say, try it. That was basically, the, the, you know, uh, democracy versus liberty as uh, stated by Benjamin Franklin. So what we're seeing right now with Democrats is they do this. They try to, uh, they, they make the argument that at the national level, they should be able to vote away the rights of the states. And the Republicans, and I mean that in the literal sense, not the Republican Party, make the argument, the states decide what happens within the states. I see moving forward, it is obvious the Democrats want to do away with a, Republican, with, with a Republicanist system. It's funny because just because calling that party Republican doesn't mean that they value the Republic and calling that party the Democratic Party doesn't mean that they have Democratic values at all. Like they could be those parties no, it, could be I, called the Red Party and the Blue Party. But it, 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 you're, you're right about the names, but it is funny how the Democratic Party wants democracy and the Republican Party wants Republican. Yeah, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, they, they like to play these cult games, these people that have so, so much money, trillionaires and stuff that they, they're so into the occult. I wonder if they're doing this out of joy. They're like, yeah, let's use the Democratic Party for direct democracy and then control with mob mentality. Direct democracy would be the most brutal and awful system. Especially ever. with social media, with Google being able to twist the human mind and get yeah. 600 million people to click a button one day. Like the amount of mob force. We got to we, we gotta do this. We should do this really soon. The, the, the idea I had for uh, de dem democratic what's for dinner. The idea being there's a list of ingredients. Everyone chooses their favorite ingredients. And then democracy is everyone gets to vote on what's for dinner. So you vote like I like you know, spinach and I like uh, mint and someone says I like red peppers and someone says I like bacon. And then whatever the democracy rule, d democratic rule is, we say, OK, we're going to throw all, all of like the, the, the things that won get thrown in the pot and it's going to be the most disgusting meal you've ever had. Yeah, because someone says, democracy. like, you know, I like uh, cotton candy. Yeah. So it's like, OK, first you decide what's for dinner, lasagna, pizza, sandwiches. Everyone then votes. The winner is sandwiches. The next thing that comes up is what's your favorite, you know, uh, uh, vegetable. And so you'll end up eating like raw broccoli sandwiches with chocolate sauce. <laughs> well, that's everyone voted. They like chocolate sauce. Everyone voted. They like broccoli. We made dinner using what everyone voted on. The, but the point here is I'm not going to go to a chef and vote on what he should use to bake to, to, to make me a nice steak. I'm going to say I elect representative chef Gordon Ramsay to oversee the production of my steak. I believe he's the right guy for the job. You take care of it. Direct democracy would be like the kitchen announcing all the ingredients and then asking you to vote on how it should be done. And then a bunch of people have no idea. The example I give before is that if you asked people to vote on making cookies, I guarantee you, or I'd be willing to bet, the majority of people would vote no salt in my cookies. 
because they don't understand and they assume well, salt. You put sugar in cookies. You don't put salt in cookies, but you do put salt in cookies. You put a little bit. And so the average person not knowing any of this would be like, no, no salt in cookies. Are you nuts? And they'd vote against it. And then you'd get awful cookies. That's democracy. <laughs> and, and there's this a constant psyop too, going to get people to, like, to think that democracy is the be all end all. There's no guarantee that democracy is going to produce positive results. I think the, the only guarantee is that you're going to have a majority of people that have, you know, that say they want this and that's what it's going to be. But that doesn't mean that the majority of people know what the be the a good outcome is to, to achieve whatever end they're looking for. Yeah, evidence would show that a direct democracy is very bad for the, the minority. Yeah. It's bad for the majority. Direct democracy does not mean the majority rules because... You, you, direct democracy does not mean we vote one time and we're done. What kind of system do you want? Here's a big list of all the things we're going to do. We vote on it and we're done. Utopia. The majority live in the, in the system they wanted. No, no. My, that's my point about making dinner. We're going to make grilled cheeses. What do we put on it? You're going to get chocolate sauce, asparagus, mushroom, grilled cheese with, with vegan cheese. It's going to be the weirdest thing ever because in democracy, you're always voting on something else coming up and not everyone agrees it not, the majority does not agree on everything. There is no the majority. There is on many issues, a majority here on an issue, a majority here. You might say, hey, we found through a direct vote, through a survey, 51% of people out of 100 like pizza. We then found 51% of people out of 100 like chocolate ice cream. However, of that 51% of people who like chocolate ice cream, half of them like pizza and half of them like sandwiches. You get my point? Not everybody who likes pizza likes the same dessert. So if you're voting on policy like how should we deal with carbon emissions, how should we deal with fossil fuel, you will find different groups of people form the majority in every different area, which means when it comes to direct democracy, your system will be ruled by 2% of the population, the microscopic 2% that wins the majority on a bunch of different issues. And thus, for dinner, you will have a sub sandwich with green peppers, raw broccoli, chocolate syrup, mint, and I don't know, anise sprayed all, anise <laughs> extract sprayed all over it. Just some weird amalgam of various groups that vote on the things they want. That's democracy. What's the alternative? A republic where you say, I am going to elect a representative mm -hmm. to actually go out and solve the problem. So instead of voting on the ingredients that I like, I tell Ian, here's the stuff I'm really into. I like green peppers. I like broccoli. I like chocolate syrup. And then Ian goes, totally get it. I'm going to go to the kitchen and talk to the chef. He talks to the chef and says, we're not going to do anything as stupid as put broccoli and chocolate syrup on a sandwich. But my guy for dessert likes chocolate. For dinner, he likes green peppers. And the chef says, how about we do a Philly cheesesteak? That sounds pretty good, right? And we'll do a side of broccoli salad because he likes that. That's a republic versus direct democracy, which is nonsense and, and, and ridiculous. Yeah, you have the idea in a republic is that you have better men, in quotes. You know, that's what they used to call them, better men that you would send to go make the decisions for you because they understand the things that they're deciding on. They understand implications and opportunity costs and things like that. But still, we, we, we have the problem of snake oil salesmen in, in a, in a, in a uh, de with democratic, democratically elected representatives. The money getting into politics really screwed things up in a, in a just a, maybe almost unconscionable way. They the should. amount of money... <coughs> that a never... corporation, that a pack can give to one guy like DeSantis, what, 200, how much did he make? 99 There's... million or something? Well, I mean, right campaign? there, you're refuting your own argument. Well, how so? Because you're saying that money matters, like all the money that DeSantis, like money getting into politics is a bad thing. Look at all the money that DeSantis got and DeSantis is losing. Yeah, but if he, so the, if he so, had to do it on his own, then he'd, he'd be speaking his mind. He'd be more like into his campaign. But that doesn't mean that he'd be winning? No, I, I disagree. I think, I don't know. Donald it, Trump spent so little. Yeah, in his I mean, first that's, campaign run. That's my point. Like Barack Obama, or like Hillary Clinton spent like a billion dollars and she lost. One of the biggest mistakes people make is saying I could do it if only I had money. Yeah, it's not true. Because I think the money makes people become subservient it to the absolutely donors. Absolutely doesn't. Well, give me an example of someone that hasn't become subservient to their donor class. That hasn't become. Well, there's there there is. Well, Marco Rubio made a really great point when someone said you're taking money from the gun lobby, so they're you know so they're making you agree with them. He's like, no, 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 no. Because of my views on gun rights, the gun lobby makes donations to me. It's the other way around. There are people who will be beholden to their donors because someone comes up to them and says, look, we can provide your PAC $50 million, but we, we, we're, we don't want you going hard on insert issue. And they might say, yes, that does happen. But typically what happens is 
the lobbyists will say, who's the best candidate to get through a bill that's going to do this thing for us? Oh, well, candidate A, they go to him and say, we hear that you're very interested in these issues. Is that something that works for you? Yes, it is. Great. We're going to support you. That's typically how it goes. The amount of money that like individual like uh, politicians can take from a a uh, a donor is not really it's like high. six That's, grand or something. Yeah, it's per, not really a lot of money. Yeah, That's why they have PACs. You know, you can give money to PACs and they I, can and they can do stuff that the, the the politician would want to do, but they're not technically working together. I just want to stress this point for everybody listening. Here's some financial advice. Um, it's not literal. It's success advice. We'll call it that. Money is not your problem. It will never be your problem. The people who say things like, because I've, I've heard this every step of the way throughout my career, if only I had the money, then I could do it. And I'm like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, you know, somebody, we'll use, we'll use journalism as an example. I wish I could travel around the world and cover journalism and do these stories. And it's like, okay, well, you need money to buy a plane ticket. You don't have the money. You can't do that, right? That's not where the job starts. Mm -hmm. The job starts with you going to your local areas and building what you can with what you can. And every day you're adding a grain of sand to the heat. I didn't start doing this show and traveling. And I, I didn't start out doing this by traveling the world. I bought a $20 bus ticket to New York and filmed things on my phone. Okay, but you need a phone. Fine, fair point. You need a certain degree of resources to do things, but it's not cost prohibitive to work a job that pays 15 bucks an hour, save up to get a basic smartphone that can film, and then start filming things around your area where you live. Not only that, someone wants to get started doing this kind of work right now. Holy crap, is it easy. You're 18 years old, you get a job at Starbucks, you make 15 bucks an hour, save every cent, sleep on a floor, sacrifice, buy a smartphone, take a bus to the southern border, and film every day and post on X for free. Guess what? Give it three, four, five months, you're going to have 10, 20,000 followers. Give it a year, you got 100,000 followers. All of a sudden, you're getting calls from every major network saying, can you come on the show and talk about what you're seeing? Yes, I can. A year goes by, and then you're having conversations with people where you're like, I'm an expert on the southern border. I've been literally down there for a year, sleeping outside, filming this stuff going on, and it costs you almost nothing. I will say, Brianna, you actually walked away from, I imagine, a lucrative contract in your corporate career. Where were you working before you went independent? So I, my, I worked in sports first thing. I was going to jump on that next, but I worked in sports and I went over to Fox and then I worked in the media, the corporate media world from there on. Because so I was at Fox, I was working as a weekend booking producer for Marita Barroma and Wall Street Journal at large. And then I literally, when I got to New York City, which was very expensive, uh, got back to New York City, they were like, vaccine or, or you know, you, you're out. Uh, so ultimately, yeah. But you know what's so interesting, too, is I actually started my career by starting a digital sports uh, radio show online and literally with no resources, <laughs> with like with like the bare minimum cheapest microphone and my laptop, like was able to somehow get like all these views because I ended up getting going viral at a couple of interviews. And then I got my job at MLB. And so ultimately, you really don't need that much. The difference is his drive, though. There were so many people in my college who were like making up excuses. They couldn't do this. They couldn't do that. But drive is really kind of the difference in all of that. And most people don't have it, sadly, especially the generation coming up. They're they're all full of excuses, but none of them want to actually do the hard work. We're seeing that now. I noticed that, too. Like, I pumped out a thousand videos in 2006 and seven, and like 99% mm -hmm. of them sucked. But those few that got traction got the eyeballs of people that then took me to the next stage of my life. Yeah. You know, building yeah. out social media. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about Sean Strickland. Ladies one. and gentlemen, Sean Strickland, UFC 297 coming up this Saturday. It's going to be amazing. I, I am not going to miss this fight. Sean Strickland, as you know, mocked Bud Light when, uh, you know, the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing happens. Bud Light then sponsors UFC. Sean Strickland comes out and says, I can't I can't wait to reform you. I'm going to I'm going to save you, Bud Light. It's a hilarious video. And we were all really excited for the moment when Sean Strickland would give a press conference knowing that he's going to sit there in front of all of the press and just go off. And he did. It is spectacular. In fact, he goes a little a little heavy with it. So I'd say I don't completely agree with everything he said so far. But, yo, this he's got a couple clips that are going viral. We're going to play for you. And uh, let's start with the covid lockdowns one. Here we go. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press. Welcome mm. to Canada. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, fucking the Canadian press, man. Were you a uh, were you a uh, a COVID bank account stealer too? Were you on board with that? No. I, ah! Are you left wing or right wing? Were you a were you a Trudeau? We got one of the, we got one of the fucking commies <laughs> with the yes. man stands. Were you non biased? 
I think I'll ask the question. <laughs> oh, I think she'll ask. Oh, we fucking know. Maybe I should just pass on this motherfucker. He's going to go back. He's going to go back and fucking give my bank account information to fucking Trudeau. <laughs> Wow, man. Well, it's probably a good bank account. Uh, it probably is a really good bank account. I love but, that he just came out and dropped fucking commies. Yes, yeah. but like the journalist didn't even say anything. Yeah. He's just sitting there like, I'm going to call you a commie. I'm going to call you out. But now I want to play this clip for you. This one goes hard. He, there, there are some people on the right even who are like, it's a little too heavy for me because he made some comments about trans people in the past too. And they're like, yeah, 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 no, no, no. We agree with calling out Bud Light and all these things. But my, my view is like, take the big ask. Bud Light sponsors UFC, and this is what you get when they do. I'm going to play the clip for you. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive gay and lesbian yeah. community in this city. I did want to ask you something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think I'd... Oh, look, like another, another... Yeah. Dish, I'm yeah. saying to you, the swamp, you guys, the hey, swamp. So you become a champion, you become a star, and, and someone... Let me ask model. you something. Have are you, you, are you, are you gay? Are, the no, are, <laughs> are you... Let me know, are, are you gay? Can I, hear, can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking, I'm, this is a part of the, are you Are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Oh, okay. If you had a son, then he was I'm like, you know, you had a son, he was gay. You'd be like, oh, man, you don't you don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh, man. Well, you, dude, you're a weak fucking man, dude. You're, like, <laughs> you're part of the fucking problem. You elected Justin Trudeau. Like, would you fucking, when he sees the bank accounts, like, you're just fucking pathetic. And and the fact that the fact that you have no fucking backbone and, and has he shut down your fucking country and seized bank accounts? You ask me some stupid shit like that? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm going to pause right there. This is not about, you know, uh, whether you support gay people or not. He's outright saying, you elect Trudeau, he shuts down bank accounts, and this is the question that I get. Spot on. Yeah, I did want to ask also things you said about the trans community. You said uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that You'd go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when uh, when they know what and will know what they stand for. Are you this guy's like, hey, this Canadian's not that Canadian. Are you still going to use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. Here's the thing about Bud Light. Ten years ago, to be trans was a what a mental fucking illness, and now all of a sudden, people <laughs> like you have fucking weaselled your way into the world. You are. You are an infection. Whoa. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of fucking you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not buying your fucking bullshit you're fucking peddling. The world is not saying, you know what? You're right. Fucking chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they could fuck in school. I don't want my kids being taught about you know, their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy is the fucking enemy. Uh, you want to look at the fucking enemy to our world? It's that motherfucker right there. So I just like to point out, he has basically just made the statement because he was asked about Bud Light. And he said, Bud Light's going to have to either accept him or denounce me. And then he called this guy an infection. Going a little hard, a little hard. Yeah. But, uh, when it comes to the political issues that he's pointing out, these these people who are lying and pretending to be allies or whatever, they don't actually care. They are literally just weak. These journalists in the United States and in Canada, these leftists, most of them, I would refer to them as default liberal. They don't actually care about these issues. In fact, many of them don't like the, these things that are being pushed by by the woke left, but they are so weak, they will march in lockstep with it. Yeah, it's interesting. Leaving sports, I, I still get messages from some of the people I used to work with and some of the athletes, too. They won't go public and say that they, they agree with me, but they'll send me a message and they'll agree with me. So it's unfortunate. But I mean, this is refreshing. They're weak. They're weak. There's a lot of weak people out there, though. They're yeah. all afraid of being canceled. And unfortunately, uh, th th there's no end in sight. But, you know, Sean's comments are refreshing. I don't always agree with all of them. But this is refreshing that someone's so transparent and so open about it. It's the only thing that you'll see in the UFC, though. The, the UFC is really the only uh, only sport. Uh, division that will ever do any of this. You won't see it in professional sports regarding Major League Baseball or NHL or uh, NFL, as we saw today. So ultimately, it's kind of refreshing to see people being so open about what it. What happened in the NFL today? Today, there's the new head coach of the Patriots, and he is, I think he's the first black coach for the Patriots. And he said during the press conference that he sees that if you don't see color, that you are part of the problem and like you are racist is what he's trying to insinuate. So he, he does not like Martin to King To go Jr., from right? no. 20 years of do your job yeah. to this yeah what an embarrassment 
embarrassment for people that don't know the new england patriots when bill belichick and and tom brady were just destroying the nfl for two decades they the whole point was do your job do your job do your job it was focused purely on the game and they get this new clown in here and like he it's been a month that he's been in i think today was just the press conference the I, welcoming press conference you know him. belichick just left yeah like belichick just ago. left and yeah. this guy's in and the first thing out of his mouth is i'm going to screw the patriots harder yeah like they're they're doomed Do they're think, doomed is the ufc a place where the athletes can speak out because of the way yeah. dana white yeah. runs it just yeah. purely because of- yeah they're okay with this they won't there's no penalties for saying this they'll you know everyone's allowed to have their own opinions and that's why i think it's refreshing because you can't do that anywhere else uh they will jump on you i think the nhl learned their lesson the hard way too when they started doing all these dei hiring practices and they've suddenly distanced themselves from it but they had like a i forgot what her role exactly was but she was a dei hire and she was pretty i mean hockey's a is a is a heavily white sport there's not very uh that's not many minorities in it and she had she was very critical of that and she was very like we need to get more minorities involved in it but they have no interest in being involved in it so why force them to do it and so we're just seeing it all over the place. That's why I, I kind of like the UFC and how they allow their players, I mean, their fighters to go out there and, and speak so openly. Is it like single single team sport? Like, I don't know, single player sports like golf? Can the golfers get away they, with saying this kind know. of thing? They, they all can. All professional athletes can. The issue is UFC knows that if they tried enforcing morality clauses on these fighters, they'd have no fighters. You can go to a golfer and he's going to be like, I don't want to fight. I'm just here to play golf. Yo, Strickland's got cauliflower ear. Yeah. He is not afraid of you. He doesn't care what you think. He's going to say what he wants to say. Also, there's because Bellator. Because he is not weak. Like, there's other fighting companies that would pick him up. And, like, fighting's... It, it's all on on Sean. Like, what Sean says is on Sean. In a team sport, what you say reflects on your team. And I think when you're in a team sport, you're kind of indoctrinated. Like, do your part for the team. Don't question the coach. Stay in line. The team is more I, yeah. important than you are. Well, I, I think that's a component of it. But it's it's... Generally, that while athletes are strong people, that's like what makes you an athlete. People who get punched in the face for a living are like the strongest of yeah. athletes. And if you're a dude like Strickland who gets punched in the face for a living and actually wins when he punches others in the face, I think he's undefeated, right? Am I wrong? I, I, I do. I have to fact check that. I don't know. Yeah, pull, pull that up. I'm, I could be. I could be wrong about that. I think he is. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not a big UFC guy. But my point is just this: you're you're not going to find on average tougher people. And so if someone comes to them and says, hey, we don't want you to say these things, right? It's a, you, you, you got a morality clause. These are the most likely guys to be like, oh, you, you pussy, fuck you. I'm going to yeah. say what I want to say. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Like, th- it, like the things he's saying about Bud Light, I'm surprised. Like Bud Light's got to respond to this. I think, I think, here's what I think. I know, I know what's going to happen. The far left will not touch this. They will not come out. They will not criticize Strickland. They will not criticize Bud Light because they know they will lose. And that will force Bud Light to issue a statement of support to Strickland and the UFC in some way. So long as there is no conflict, all the far left can do is sit down and shut up. Yeah. Yeah. He's 9-0, so he's undefeated. Um, yeah. I thought it was interesting, too, this year. MLB, uh, all the teams except the Rangers didn't have an LGBT plus night. Rangers didn't do it. Everyone else did. And ultimately, the Rangers won the World Series. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I, I thank God for rewards those who do. Okay, no, no, he's he, he's he's lost five fights, two by knockout, oh, really? three by submission. Ah, the latest numbers. This is he's twenty eight and five. Is that just his total career? Yeah, five f- five losses. But you so see nine and zero. Is that in the UFC or Let's something? Let's see. Strickland had made his professional debut in twenty oh eight. Let me click on it. Hold on. The first thing that popped on Google was said yes, he was. I don't know. I'm reading a sports Kita. They say that he's lost five. 28 and five. 128, lost five. That's a great record. Look, yeah. man. Yeah, not bad. I don't care what you do, but I just think it's fairly obvious if you're if you're a fighter, you're quite literally a fighter. And people who play basketball are probably just like, man, leave me alone. You know what I mean? It's it's very, very different. A lot of pro skateboarders are coming around, though. This is really exciting. And I think one of the things that's really important, too, and I encourage all these companies to do more of it, there are... Uh, you know, I'll be on Instagram and I'll see a clip from a pro skateboarder and they're wearing a public square shirt. That's how you solve this. When public square goes to a pro athlete in action sports and says, we're going to pay you X amount of dollars per month, wear our shirts, put our stickers on your gear. They say, you got it. I'm getting paid. Guess what? Now they're not scared to speak out because mm-hmm. they'd be like, look, I ride for this energy drink company. And if I say this stuff, they're going to fire me. 
Now they're like, yeah, energy drink company might fire me, but I get paid more, more by Public Square and Rumble anyway. So what do I care? Yep. People can have issues. Like if, if, if you, you never know, right? You might come out and say something, you know, about, I don't know. Oh, I just plain don't like uh, shepherd's pie. And then it turns out that the CEO of a company who sponsors you owns a shepherd's pie, you know, freezer food company. And he's like, you're hurting our brand. So we're dropping. You never know what's going to offend one of your sponsors. So if you've got sponsors with a wide range of political backgrounds, you're safe. And as more and more companies on the right sponsor athletes and just anyone who can be sponsored, the more likely it is they're going to publicly speak up and defend their values. And there are more people that are coming out and, and pushing back against woke. There, it is, a, it is you know, kind of getting to a point where people are standing up and saying, hey, no, we're not doing this anymore. It, it's something that it's going to take. It's not something that's going to go away easily because it, it is. There's a lot of money in it, first of all. There's a lot of uh, people that are true believers. The whole woke thing that's gone into, like, when it comes to the LGBT and trans and stuff like that, anybody, any parent that helped their child mutilate their body, they are never going to ever let it go. They're going to be true believers for the rest of their lives because if they go ahead and say, well, maybe I was wrong, then they've in, you know enabled their child to mutilate their body. So there's, there's going to be people that are going to push back probably for decades, but overall it looks like most m the general consensus is this is not something that we want dictating our society which is you know extremely hopeful and my fingers are crossed but yeah i think know. that a lot of the last five years of of crazy dei and and child sex changes was like those kids are adults now like chloe cole has, is very vocal adult she, i don't know she's 19 is she 19 now or 19 or 20 know. and she had her double mastectomy when she was 15 and now is like how horrible that i was led to do this to myself yeah. and she's like leading the charge as an adult now kind of talking back and we're also seeing the the payout of the parallel economy in action we talked about parallel economy two years ago and like we need a parallel economy then public square appeared then rumble went public and like now we see the value and, of it is people feel like they can speak out because they're being sponsored by companies like and that. uh cast brew coffee that's right uh it's preliminary but cast brew coffee not only has an alex stein two times caffeine it's prime time grind uh, alex stein's prime time grind two times caffeine but uh, we're gonna be sponsoring this show too I love that so right we're gonna make sure that the people we like and and do fun things the thing about alex is that he does a kind of political comedy. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's silly. It's 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 levity, and so uh, you know I'm talking to him. We did the coffee blend with him, and now you know we're we're I don't know. I should say it's a little early. We'll say, I don't know. The Blaze is in, is is involved because the show's on the Blaze. But I'm like, yeah, let's let's roll. Let's do this. I want there to be more of people like Alex Stein. because you know a lot of people will say things like, I'm going to help fight the culture war. I'll make a podcast, and I'm like, that's really cool. Yeah, do it if you want to do it, but we need more than that. We need, we need biltong companies. You know what I mean? Like we need companies that make things like sodas. Mm -hmm. And then if you make a soda, you sponsor someone. Public Square, I, I, I'm I, trying to figure out who they sponsor, but I remember seeing like a video. I think it's a BMX guy. I'm not sure. Or maybe a skateboarder, but they're wearing a Public Square shirt. And I'm like, that's it right there. Because kids are going to come to those events to watch the guy do the backflip. And he's going to be wearing Public Square and they're going to recognize that. And I'm hoping within a few years, Public Square is bigger than Amazon pipe dream but when you get to that point where you know every every business you're shopping at here's the best part we need to get to the point where businesses may not actually have our values and share the values of the nuclear family and you know the the, the, the constitution but they come out and say i'm all for it please buy my product because that's what the woke has and has had for a long time and they're losing they had this issue where most businesses don't actually care about wokeness but we'll fly the flag because that's what they're supposed to do. You fly the American flag. That's what you're supposed to do. And if you don't know or care about the Constitution, fine, but you fly the American flag. That's the indoctrination we want. So when conservatives are like schools shouldn't be indoctrinating kids. It, no, they should be. They yeah. should be indoctrinating them yes. on American constitutional values. You should you should raise your children to not to hate you and your society. Yeah. And we have at least a decade probably closer to two decades of graduating classes who went through an entire their entire life in school where they were told that the united states and liberalism is bad and evil and produces all only negative effects 
you sh- and the idea that that is a is going to do anything other than destroy your society is ridiculous. I used to hate the public school indoctrination, swear an oath to a flag of allegiance that I don't even understand, but I'm pledging my soul to this this corporate corporation called the United States. I was like, oh, I hate it. But now I'm I, I'm more like you're going to get indoctrinated by something. So yeah. it may as well be the American flag. And then maybe that'll point you at the Constitution you, and you'll learn about it. That's 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 a really, really, really good point. There is going to be some frame to the way that you see society, right? There's going to be certain there's going to be a certain way that you look at society. Like you're talking about they're going to be indoctrinated some way. And that's really all it is. It's just how you perceive society and how you are how the 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 narrative that you believe your society, you know, uh, uh, that describes your society. So if you're going to have some kind of narrative that you're going to believe, then you might as well believe one that is pro you and your family and the people in your country, the people that are local to you. you know? I hope everybody watches on Saturday. I want, you know, it's pay-per-view on Saturday. Uh, I I think you can, I'm pretty sure you can go to like any sports bar. They'll be playing. Oh, is that a show. Strickland fight? Time, yeah. Well, Str- Str- yep. Strickland's fight oh. Saturday, January 20th, Saturday, pay-per-view. So uh, we are definitely going to be watching this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope everyone does. Because uh, you want to help build a parallel economy? You want to win a culture war? You want UFC and a, particularly the 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 the, the, uh, the fight with Strickland to be a smashing success, make tons of money. And it's going to no matter what. But let's all uh, sit down, enjoy the show, tweet about it, make it trend, make it go viral. And I, I hope Strickland wins. I wonder if Dana White visualizes his deal with Bud Light as like a jujitsu, as like a UFC match. He's like, I received their incoming force. I grabbed it. And now it's a ground game. I've got them on the ground with their hundred million in my pocket. Let's but we'll, see if they can get out of this one. And he this, lets dudes like Sean just light fire. This is my point about declaring victory. We now mock Bud Light relentlessly. We need Bud Light. We should be saying things like, wow, thank you, Bud Light, for sponsoring that message. They are infections, aren't they, right? Figuratively. I'm not saying literally say exactly what he said, yeah. but make the point that Bud Light funded this, and we're glad they did. I will criticize a little bit of what Sean did there, because I, I I don't like, this is something, and maybe it's just me, maybe there's room for it to to really be like, this This is the enemy of the state. This guy right here is he all of state. your enemy. He didn't say the state. No, but he's like intimating, like, this person is the enemy of your reality. It's that guy. And like singling out a human and telling everyone in the room that that he's your villain especially for a person in power is very it can, I have to get that guy lynched so you got to be careful i half agree and i agree in the sense that targeting a single individual but i disagree in that we do need to use mockery of bad and evil people that is a powerful tool that's why memes are so effective it's why political cartoons are so effective so agreed pointing to a single guy saying that's the enemy you know, like, come on, that guy's like a doofy moron, you know, so I get it. But calling out the machine and saying these are the behaviors that lead to death, destruction, pain, harm, suffering, etc. is an important thing to do. And yeah. doing it in a way that mocks and belittles and them. Because you want to humiliate that reporter for sure. I mean, that, I think that's what Sean's intent was. He just did it in a really, like, <laughs> aggressive, angry, well, fighter more, way. More than one. He'll think yeah. twice before he ever ask that question again, though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I think that that's a, a really good point. And I think that that's... That's what he's intending to do because really like that stuff doesn't have anything to do with UFC. Nothing. It's all about, it's all social questions. It's all questions about, you know, culture war stuff. Um, Right. So. And that's, and that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why this is so great. Yeah. He says Trudeau freezes people's bank accounts and that's what you're going to ask me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what I love? How about another, another good line is exactly that to say things like, do you want to ask questions about fighting or do you want to ask questions about politics to get clicks on the internet? Because mm-hmm. that's what they're doing. That's why they do it. They don't They don't know anything about this guy. I'm willing to bet these fighters, he, he's not going to hear the name Strickland ever again. He's not going to watch the fight. He's not going to care about the fight. He's going to leave and be like, oh, I don't know. I was assigned to go to something. I have no idea what it was. I didn't see the entire press conference where dudes asking him about his ground game. Were they asking him about his left hook? Like, do they talk? Are they actually talking about his fight too? I, I, I hope so. I'd imagine. But the reason why this is the highlight is because he tears down these woke corporate journalists and these Canadian authoritarians. But like, I, I love I just roasting Canada. Yeah, right? like I think Brianna has a good point. Like the, the people should embarrass these guys for asking these questions, like mock them because you want them to stop because we you, you don't want these kind of identity questions to be 
you know, the the focus of our whole society. Like you're at the you're you're talking to, you know, a UFC fighter. Why are you asking him about like, you know, trans stuff and and LGBT <clears throat> issues? It's like it it's totally not it, it totally has nothing to do with what what he's doing and and we don't need to have that kind of stuff just permeate society so just start mocking people that bring it up in every context i want to jump to this next story we have this clip from the samsung galaxy s24 ultra commercial and i want to explain to you why this is the apocalypse <laughs> this this is skynet it's been a good run humanity it's over I can't wait to get one. And uh, uh, I ordered one myself. Uh, mine's going to be here at the end of the month. Did you order one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine will be here at the end of the month. I'm very excited it's for it. 29th but uh, what I'm talking about is their AI phone app, which incorporates intrinsic Photoshop capabilities, but also can generate portions of an image that don't exist for artistic value. Meaning they showed in one demo when a photo was taken at an angle of a guy you can rotate it, but then the edges are cut off and auto generate the edges using artificial intelligence that will generate what it appears it w may be. This means photos are going to be created. We're beyond filters. OK, Philip Bonte, I, I know Photoshop exists, but Photoshop is a is, is a rare thing. And we question when these when fake photos are made on average, if someone takes a picture on their phone, it's a real picture with the advent of the S24. And it's not just the S24, Apple, the iPhone is doing this too, but we are in this era now. The phone, the pictures that are stored on people's phones are all going to be fabrications and imitations of reality, meaning we are no longer recording what's really going on. We are manufacturing fake records of, of, of events. So in this clip, let me play this clip for you so you can see exactly what he's talking about. Photos in your gallery. Then again, this blue three star button to activate Galaxy AI. When you're in this mode, here are a few things you can Look do. Look at that. He just, and this is great. I'm buying the phone, by the way, right? <laughs> he taps the guy who's in it and removes it. The first him. is you can tap or draw around anything you yeah, want. Yeah, the interesting thing is that he, he clicks so generate. The, right, it's built in. For when you yeah. want to remove Look at this. unwanted people or objects from the background. As you can see here. Okay, he removes the guy outright and what's behind him? Nothing. The AI created a fake image. The reason why this is so freaky. This is exactly what I've been warning about as to how AI will destroy things. The example I've given Donald Trump speaking at that press conference after uh, um, uh, was it Char Charlotte's uh, Charlottesville, Charlottesville. There you go. Wow. I can't believe I forgot the name of the city. And he says, I am not talking about the white nationalists yeah. and the neo-Nazis because they should be condemned totally. Mm -hmm. The left lied. Biden lied. They claimed he said, you know, very fine people referring to them when he said he wasn't the full context with Altering very slightly using deep fake technology, you change Trump from saying they should be condemned totally to some should be condemned totally. And that alters the context massively and will be impossible to track. So the left will share the video of Trump saying some should be condemned totally. And they'll go, wow, he actually thought others there were nice. He didn't say all of them. And the right will point out, no, 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 he said they should be. He's referring to all of them. They say, no, nah, here's our video. Here's your video. There will be two videos with only one word changed. What we're going to see here now is how about this? Donald Trump is at a rally and he's shaking hands with a guy. And then someone takes a picture of it on their phone and just drags Trump over shaking hands with a different guy. And that other guy happens to be a prominent white nationalist. Trump doesn't know and was standing in the background. Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of things we'll start to see that are shocking and scary. But I think the bigger picture here is outside of those rare occurrences is that every photo you see on Instagram filters are already changing what women and, and men look like. And it's causing problems in people's brains yep. young girls are getting crazy plastic surgery i read an article today about a guy who got bone lengthening surgery yes. and it, it's causing him such pain that he can't sleep anymore because he's like i, I need to be tall you know that's <laughs> what inches. the internet says yeah four inches he went from five five eight to six feet gosh right and so what's going to happen now is these photos that are going to be posted all over the place are basically fake in their entirety so in this video he removes the guy from the picture and then moves his uh, this other guy over. That never happened. And, you know, another thing is, like, there's people already are so, uh, like, confirmation bias is such a massive problem that if you just show people pictures that are, you know, doctored and they already want to, you know, hate whoever it may be a picture of that you're, you know, showing them. They're already geared to to believe negative things about a person if they don't like them. So if you show a, a picture that's, you know, 
Post truth reality man. Uh, you know, it's 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 going to be real tough to get people, uh, you know, to 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 navigate. Do you guys remember there was this uh this like e girl or whatever, this Asian woman? And it was like a young woman making a bunch of money and then at one point she moved and the filter missed yeah. and, it, and it was... she turned into an old lady. <laughs> And then back, and everyone went, whoa, she's an old lady the whole time, pretending to be like an 18-year-old girl to make money. That's where we're going. Uh, I think that the who, who, older like, generation is going to be more susceptible to it. People that were raised like in the TV te picture era that still like communicate by sending pictures and not video. They don't use video chat as much. Like the young people might be more on guard to this kind disagree. of stuff. Uh, Old, older, so older people still watch CNN and Fox News and cable TV because that's the world they grew up in. And they have peers. When they go to events, they see other people like them who they will talk to and they have a shared reality. What's going to happen with this is older people are going. This is the crazy thing. It's going to create an amalgam reality of a, a unified social system. So, man, this is so it's, it's so crazy to break down. When I worked for Vice, I kept saying things like, why aren't we investing in social media? I know that Vice is big on social media, but why are they so obsessed with TV and documentary? It's because Shane Smith, the CEO, was in his mid 40s and what was big to the Gen Xers was cable TV. And he was only like the Internet is just something that helped us launch. I was a younger guy and my whole world was the Internet. And I was like, I don't understand why they're doing this old stuff that no one cares about. It's because when the CEO went to board meetings and when he went to investors, the only thing they cared about was TV. So in his world, TV was everything. and the Internet was something ancillary for me. I didn't know anybody who cared about TV. Nobody watched it. Everybody was on the internet. With this and social media and fabricated reality, you're going to have people who are, and we're already seeing this, they're going to be like, this is exactly what's happening right now. A 40-year-old woman wanting to fit in online with the average age and trying to be 20. Well, they're going to filter everything. That, that's why you're going to see a 60-year-old woman running filters to appear like she's 20. I, I'm seeing like kids in the future in the next 10 15 years when they get a picture sent by one of their friends the first question i'll ask is what did you doctor with your ai when they see the picture they won't even they'll know that that's part of it whereas people that are 60 and 70 are from the age of polaroids where a, a picture was what it was it was real and so they'll be like they'll just look at it and they won't even question there, there's already really funny videos of, like uh playing gta for old people and the old people think it's real because they don't know what these things are. They're watching a video of a car like Chase and then flip over and the graphics are so amazing and their eyes aren't so good that they're like, oh, oh. And then they're all, all the young people are laughing like it's a video game. Yeah, I wonder it's how the fake. fact checkers are going to deal with this, you know, because obviously we know some of them are biased, but ultimately when things are being posted online, especially during election years, how do they vet that information? How do they, they see if a photo is legit? This is an opportunity for fact checkers. Yes. <laughs> this is, this is an opportunity think. to shape the facts One the think. way they like, see Like deep take, deep, deep fake uh, recognition software has got to be like, it's the new lock on your door. Like for your brain, you've got to know if something's been deep faked. We've already yeah. tried this with, there, there's already apps that do deep fake detection and they've been wrong on a lot of issues, on, on, a, on a lot of images. Uh, the, the, the photos coming out of Israel that people yeah. were getting different results. It was saying it was fake or it wasn't fake and nobody, everyone's like, this is a really good example. And, and it was the remains of a baby and the left were all saying it was fake. Yep. And the right was all saying it's real. And what would happen is people on the left would run it through their air detect, air, deep fake detection. It would say it's a fake photo and they'd go, aha, proof. And then people on the right would be like, I checked this and it's saying it's it's a real photo. So you, you choose. Reality is your choice. The evidence is meaningless. Yep. And eventually people are just going to start fighting each other because they're going to be like, I don't understand. I saw the video of Trump kicking that dog. And someone else is going to be like, he wasn't kicking the dog. He was pushing it out of the way of, an, of a coming truck. And so it's going to be like, the, insert reality. That's current. I mean, that currently goes on. There's the the people that were, you know, argue about what they saw with, with um, Oh, Kyle Jim Rittin. Acosta. Jim Acosta? When uh, he was, he had the microphone in his hand. Oh, he White had House the fight aid, over. Mm -hmm. It was funny to see these pundits be like, the White House aide tried to rip the mic from him. And mm -hmm. my point was like, so what? Even if she did try to make, take the mic from him, it's not his mic. Why was he holding on to it? But I thought it was fairly obvious that he jerked his hand back from her. Mm -hmm. She went to grab it and then he pulls his hand back. Like, I think what happened was he was tensing up trying to stop her from taking it. And when she took it, it he pulled his hand back. Yeah. And people look at the Kyle Rittenhouse footage, all that footage, and they still see different things. And it's not a surprise. This isn't anything new. And yeah, it's only going to get worse and, and more confusing and more difficult. And the, the crazy thing is um, 
with the Rittenhouse case, we already saw the attempted use of AI generated imagery yep. imagery to convict someone when they zoomed in and said, see, there you can see it. And then the judge didn't understand. Zoom isn't a thing. You can't zoom in. You can't create pixels. So the phone manufactures what it thinks will be there. It is it is an artificial intelligence generating the image as you zoom in. It is not real, but people don't know that. Yeah, Derek Chauvin learned the hard way over the video that went viral. It looks like his his knee is on you know George Floyd's neck, and then ultimately a different angle makes it appear like it's not exactly on his neck. Because so, on his upper back or something? Yeah, yeah. I think it was over more towards the shoulder blade area is what it kind of looks like from a different angle. It doesn't look like it was what... But that's politics. Been like. I mean, that that I think that case outright, the video doesn't even matter. Yeah. The fact that the guy who was you know, standing nearby holding an angry crowd back is going to prison. Like, mm -hmm. I think with Ahmed Arbery and George Floyd, the reality is actually quite simple. If you cause problems for the system, we will discard you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. where we're at. And they have, sadly. Yeah, but uh, I suppose now we'll go to Super Chats. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member. Because this show is made possible in part by viewers like you. As a member, you help us expand our operation and do crazy things. And I know people are already chatting saying, Tim said before that you don't need money to do these things. And that if you need the money, you're like, do not misconstrue what I am saying. What I'm saying is you can get started on your own. But ain't nobody's trying to make the argument that you can run a 42 person staff uh, media operation without support of members and advertisers. My point is that you build up to that point from the ground up. No one is going to come to you and say, I will give you a million dollars per month to run a media company unless you already have done so, know how to do so and can build it. So if you were saying I could do it if only I had the money. Right. My point is the average person who's trying to build up a successful business. You need to start from the ground up and, and make it work. There's various different industries that require different kinds of money, but ultimately experience has to come from you working in that industry. How long in the music industry, Phil, did you work without getting paid before you guys started getting paid? Um, I guess the first time that I actually like got a paycheck that was like a real paycheck was probably about 10 years into All That Remains being a band. And how long had you been playing music? Uh, by then, I... I started playing, I was about 15, it was about 15 years that I'd been playing uh, guitar and, and being in bands and stuff. So so you started playing guitar and then five years after that, you you started All That all Remains. remains yeah. five and then 10 years after that, you got paid. Yeah. And so my point here is you're not going to go to someone who doesn't play guitar, sing drums yeah. or anything. And if they go, I could be a rock star if I just had the money. It's like, bro, you can't even play the guitar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start playing the guitar, learn how to make music and then start figuring out how to generate value from it. And even after it, it took Phil, you're saying 15 years of mm -hmm. working in music from st learning how to play to doing it yep. to get a paycheck that three that different mattered. bands too. That, so, and, and that's the point. Technically that's like, think of it, think like, think of it like three different businesses, you know? So two, my, the first two businesses that I started failed and then all the, it was the same business. way with acting for me. I did 10 years of theater for no pay. And mm -hmm. then eventually I got landed a commercial gig. And I, a lot of people chase that big break where they're like, if I just go to Hollywood and they pick me, but like, yo, get your chops wet, man. You got to get a body of work behind you and you get better at it. The more you practice too. I will say this though, as a business owner, the one thing I will advise of anyone who wants to own a business is that the average person does not understand where money comes from and uh, doesn't live in the same world. Entrepreneurs and employees have completely different worldviews. And it is absolutely remarkable that this is the case. And I think it's a huge problem. Everyone needs to needs to understand the issue of money in, money out. The idea that you... So I had a friend who worked uh, at a media company. They were... Uh, this is Fusion. Fusion was unionizing. And I told my friends, I had left. You need to tell your boss that you don't agree with the union, you don't want to be a part of it, you have nothing to do with it, and you'd love to keep working for the company. And they're like, why? I'm, I think the union's great. We're going to get paid more money. And I'm like, your company doesn't make money. Okay, Fusion was a net negative. It was losing investment. And now you're all going to the boss and asking for more money when you don't make money? They're going to be like, well, you've brought in negative $50,000 this year. We paid you 100. I think we'd rather just fire you. And so what happened? Fusion fired everybody.
That's that's what that's people don't understand about running a business. Did they disband the union? Were they able? There wasn't. I, 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 the union never formed. Yeah, I think I think the company just shut down. I don't know if the union never formed. I think there was like Writers Guild or some other union was trying to get them to all join. And I, I told my friend, I was like, you do realize the company was built on investor funding. It doesn't generate revenue or profit. I should say it makes money, but it doesn't make profit. So if you're now going to your boss and saying you're paying me one hundred thousand dollars a year, you don't I don't generate more than one hundred thousand dollars a year. You now have to pay me one hundred and fifty. The boss is going to be like, that's just my money I'm giving you. Like you're, you're asking me for just to give you money. Like, why would I do that? And that's ultimately the company shuts down. They fired they fired 300 plus people or something like this. And they're just like, OK, that's it. Wow. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Can't can't do it. There's got to be money in and money out. This You know what I love about the far left when they say things like the workers are entitled to uh, portions of, of uh, uh, portions of what they create. You know, this like socialist argument. The workers should own the means of production. Right. Do you yeah, guys. That's, you, that's kind of like the communist battle. Yeah, cry. Right. Great. Seize I, the I, means I, of production. I, no, I completely agree with that. So long as they also uh, get a portion of the debts and liabilities and they have to pay for it. So if someone says like, hey, I helped build that car and you sold it, I should get a portion of the revenue for that car. I'll be like, oh, OK, well, the production line, we're actually negative one million dollars on our liabilities from the loans we had to take. So I agree. Let's share the proceeds. You owe me one hundred thousand dollars. No, no, I don't want any of the liabilities. I just want the money. OK, well, the money is covering the liabilities because we're negative right now. Maybe in a year or two when we're profitable, you'll get a bonus for the time being. We ain't got no money. Yeah, but I'm all for it. If someone said, you know, we want to we, we, we should control the means like we should get a, a percentage like Bernie Sanders wants to do that thing where everyone gets 20 percent of the company stock. There's like some bill that he wants to propose where a portion of stock in all public companies will be set aside for employees. And I'm like, totally agree. So long as alongside it, it's all company liabilities as well. And then the way we do it is if the employees uh, they have stock in the company. Fantastic. And if the company's running in the red, then the employees have to pay the, the company, right? Well, no, the company just shuts down if it can't, and no one has to pay. No, they should have to pay. Yeah, if, well, I mean, if, if that's the world they want to live in, if the world they want to live in is that everyone who has a stake in the company has a responsibility and a right to its to its benefits, then they have a responsibility to its uh, deficits as well. Yeah. And so we can simply say, great, the company won't go under. Because if you're an assembly line worker and you're making shoes and then you say the company made a billion dollars, I deserve, you know, X million in profits to be shared among the employees. I'm actually a fan of that. I say, yeah, absolutely. There should be a degree of, you know, bonuses being given out to those who are producing the product that makes the money. And then when the company goes in debt on a rainy day, you have to pay the company the, the inverse. Will anyone take that deal? Here's yeah. the deal. You get a set salary of 80,000 a year. I will pay you to do the work. That's it. If I make money, I make money. If I lose money, I lose money. Or we can do this. You will get, you know, we will set aside 20% of profits for everybody. And if we run in the red, everyone else has to pitch in to cover the cost of 20% of our loss. You think anyone agree to that, would agree to that deal? You yeah. might get some, some employees that do, some zealous people that believe in the mission. I'd be totally fine with that. I'd say, that'd be great. So when we run a deficit this month, I'll, I look forward to you writing me a check and me not paying you anything. Good luck paying your rent. That's what's going to happen. Uh, maybe you could just reduce their salary to but no lower than zero. So you could be like, if we run debt, you get you you will lose income up well, to their, their, all. Their salary is part of what generates debt. Yeah. So if if you've got to hire three people and you're paying each of them a hundred grand, you're, you're three hundred thousand down for the month. They got to pay that money back. They are the detriment, and they owe you a portion of the losses. Granted, you 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 absorb a portion of losses too. It's only fair. But no leftist would ever take that deal. And that's the lie of socialism. They want the benefits, but they never want the liabilities. They want you to absorb all the debts and all the liabilities. That's your problem. If we all work for you and your and your product uh, generates a deficit through loans or liabilities, or how about this? You're making widgets, you're sh making shoes. You generate a million dollars in profits. You give t you take two hundred thousand dollars. You disperse it among your staff as a bonus. The next year, you get fined by the FTC because of something that you feel wasn't your fault, but the government finds you a million dollars. All the employees immediately go, hey, don't look at us. All we did was make the shoes. And my response would be, yes. And you're responsible for the same portion that you're paid out. So you got to pay back, you know, $200,000 between all of you. That's a debt. The company assumed a liability and now you owe us. That's equal responsibility. It's just, too, it's too risky to put the, the employee's responsibility in the hands of the CEO. Because if the CEO screws the company, I don't think that all- What if the employees, employees screw the company? What if one and they're fired? 
So if one employee, if, and if you could sue them if they really screwed the company, so CEOs if, can get fired too. Right. Tech, yeah, Everyone's technical. doing a different job. One's managing things. One's making the product. Let's say one of the employees accidentally spills a bottle of acetone in your soda. And then a batch of those sodas go out and make a bunch of people sick. Well, is it whose responsibility is to pay for the fine and the lawsuits for all that damages? The company is now sued for $40 million and all the employees say, no, we're entitled to the benefits from the product, but not the not, not the not the mistakes. That's yeah, someone else's it, fault. It must be that the risk outweighs that the rewards outweigh the risks in corporate governance. Just in general, you tend to make more than you lose. Otherwise, this whole system would have failed. So there must be it must be that more times than not, the company comes in profitable more than it, it's getting employee i mean if employee intentionally spilled acetone they'd go to prison so no i'm like, saying an, an accident happens who's responsible for it the one guy okay then everyone can vote and say that one guy owes us the money but if everyone's entitled to a share of the profits everyone's entitled to a share of its liabilities as well and so at the end of the interesting month, concept you could run a company like that and see what happens yeah but my, my, my point is simply this i'm all for it the socialists come out and say we should get 20 percent of a company's stock dedicated to us and it's like, oh, OK, so value of the company and the labor it produces, but not any of its liabilities. Nah, you we, we have to create a special type of share where it's like as a, a, a holding that 20 percent means if the company is generating profit, you'll get paid a dividend. And if it's a net loss, you owe a debt. So let's say the company generates a million bucks in profit. That share will be worth its its dividend. And if the company generates a deficit, they will come to the, at the end of the year and say, here's your bill for what you owe us as a part owner of the company. Yeah, but if they were all investors in that case, and that kind of sense, um, you wouldn't really have a CEO anymore. They'd all have to, some type of say in how the companies ran. Even the guy and, and in the share, manufacturing share, shareholders plan. do get a vote. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, shareholders but the guy in the vote. manufacturing plan could could eventually just kind of first off, he probably doesn't know how to run the business. He just knows his like one skill set in that sense, and he could actually tank the company too. So I don't know if it'd be that's so true beneficial. For any company. Yeah, <clears throat> that's why I'm saying the leftist idea is moronic. Yeah. Natural hierarchy and entrepreneur, uh, an entrepreneur, uh, not entrepreneurial endeavors makes a lot of sense. And if you are hired by someone to do a job, you're not entitled to what comes after. If I hire you to build a skateboard ramp, you're not entitled to the to the revenue from the from the ads generated from a guy filmed sk doing a kickflip off of it. Let's read. Let's read Super Chats. All right. Jacob Parody says, first, V for Vendetta, Vivek VP. Well, right on. Vivek Ramaswamy's initials are VR. Speaking of the virtual reality and his son's initials are AR. Arjun, <laughs> shout out to Arjun, <laughs> indicating the right. augmented reality. Triple Flip says, Tim and crew, please never forget that you are truly changing the world. I love you all very much, except Seamus. I only just kind of like Potato Man. <laughs> oh, well, you Poor know. Poor Seamus. Seamus is going to be back for, uh, I believe he's going to be coming here for an extended period. Ooh. Back coasting the show. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Probably a couple times per week because uh, we can't take up all his time. He's got, sh he's got freedom tunes to run. He does like that freedom tunes. Keith said, Sean Strickland, the real people's champ. Here, here, man. Max says, Tim, are there going to be any positions to open at any of the new places you're opening up? I'm in the Frederick area and I'm looking for gainful employment. Would love to help the cause. Uh, so I think June is when the coffee shop will officially open. And that's probably like the most immediate job availability. But I got to be honest, it's likely going to be someone who just walks in off the street with a resume who gets that job. And they're going to like make coffee. That's about it. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to have upstairs is the club, which really cool. A lot of the club stuff's already there. Like, I, I'm, it's really great. We're, we're doing this show, but behind the scenes, it is moving. So in a week or so, the new studio production is getting done. The new computer for the new studio is already being built. The new studio, the whole structure is approved, final, done. The kitchen is there. There's a stove. There's a refrigerator. Bathrooms all work. Get this. The bathrooms that we're going to have in the new studio, they they are electric with seat warmers, and there are those Japanese-style toilets that clean your butt for you. Wicked. The bidet? That. Well, it's built in. <laughs> really? Yes. It's a toilet you sit down on. It's got a controller, and you can press buttons. We are going to be eco-friendly using well water instead of paper when we clean our bottoms. Instead wow. of? Don't you use them both in conjunction? Well, yeah. I'm just saying you need less oh, because nice. the, the we have the electric toilet that cleans. Have you guys used you. just two squares I've never to used kind of pat bidet. it dry afterwards? <laughs> I hear yeah. bidets are great, and I, I've never been able to bring myself to do it. Just, really? I can't, yeah, oh, take that, Greta. Do you yeah, have we one? We finally got one. Uh, yeah, I bought one. I haven't installed it. And I'm like, I should. But like, I hear good things. They're only 30 bucks. Nah, the, the, re the real answer is the Japanese toilet. <laughs> it's all built in. You just sit down and, 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 and you know, it's got a warmer on it and they have blow dryers. Wow. Yeah. The toilets? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. oh. They really thought of everything. Is yeah. it the, is it the speakers on it, the sound makers and stuff too? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. White noise. Yeah. Like yeah, it'll yeah, play yeah. like birds and stuff. You need yeah. these frequency generators so you can vibrate and get the brown note. <laughs> no, the brown. Don't. I think the brown is between two and four hertz or Yo, something like there's that. There's this app. I forgot what it's called. It's like Better Sleep or something. I saw a commercial for it. Mm -hmm. And you hook it up to a speaker and it plays a bunch of different sounds for you while you sleep. I, I was like, that's actually really cool because you can play like forest noises or the beach. There's thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. So this is actually interesting. There, there are YouTube channels. There was one guy we helped out a while ago. He got banned on YouTube. All of his videos were like AI generated environments. environments. So you could play a video of being in a wood cabin by the fireplace during a thunderstorm. It's really awesome. You're like reading a book, you turn it on, put it on the big screen, and then it sounds like you're in a storm. And it's like, it's fun. It's a fun experience. Well, they made an app for it. That guy got banned. We got him unbanned. That was a weird thing that happened. But they have an app for it. And uh, I'm like, oh, this is really cool. It's got like piano music. It's got forest sounds. And then it has brown noise. Yeah, Ian gave me a look like, wait, what? And I'm like, uh-huh. There's like pink noise, white noise, green noise, and brown noise. And I was like, I don't know that's a sound I want to play. You know what I mean? There might mm -hmm. be a time. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps you uh, ate too much cheese and you're having some trouble. <laughs> Dude, I put on 528 hertz and I ran to the bathroom. I felt like I was going to purge. I Are was you like, saying oh. you found the brown note? <laughs> Maybe, but then I looked it up and they said it was much lower frequency. Eh? All right, let's read some more. Know. Noah R says, I'm going to buy Bibles even harder now. Yep, you got to have to. Yeah, you're going to have to like buy like 50 Bibles and hide them from the government. <laughs> It's I like V for Vendetta weird. where the guy has the Quran. Stephen Fry's character has a Quran hidden mm -hmm. in his wall. And also weird BDSM porn, I guess. But, you yeah. know, whatever. <laughs> All right. Wyatt Caldenberg says, Tim, when was the last time in history that a government made an enemy list of its own citizens and it didn't end in mass murder? This is Stalinist. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm saying this is dark stuff. It sounds really bad. They're, they're putting together a list. They want to know who's buying what and what you're doing. Man, it's coming. Do you guys use Amazon? Do you use Amazon, Brianna? I love Amazon. I know I shouldn't love it, but I do. That's how I am. I know. I know. It's a guilty little thing over there. Every time I'm like, should I buy it? And I always end up doing it. I know. I got to get off of it. There's got to be a good alternative. There are certain Public things. Public Square. That it, yeah. Is there, it, what's that? There are certain things it's okay to buy from Amazon, but like you like, shouldn't buy everything from Amazon. Giving them money. I love All right. Here's a good one. John O'Bell says, no surprises here. Tim has no idea of English Civil War history. You are correct. I don't. Much like many people in England have no idea about American revolutionary history. I don't, I don't know anything about Athens. I know a little bit. I know there's a thing called the Parthenon. Don't know much about it. Ooh, I like Greek history. I've, I think I've been there. It's, it's like there, right? You can go like, I yeah, know. the Parthenon's up on the Acropolis. Yeah, we went, oh, that's right. The Acropolis. Yeah, I went there and uh, I don't know anything about it. It was a defensive bastion. Uh, there, there, there are many things I do not know. Went Met, to uh, Lesbos. That was really cool. The, uh, the British Civil War. That's is where this? lesbians come from. Lesbos? I'm pretty sure. Really? Because right? it was hot? I don't know. Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> no, it, no, it comes from the. I believe it comes from the Odyssey. I think, and they were like on, on the Isle of Lesbos. That's and there was a bunch of ladies sure. getting on. I mean, yeah. I Google so. it. According you, to you Homer, have, you, you have the you have the a plethora, and you have the summation of human knowledge right before your fingertips. <laughs> Let's yeah. find out. Did Lesbos come from the lesbians? No, that's, I wrote it backwards, but Google understands. <laughs> it's actually brave. What, I'm what does using. it say? Does it say yes? The word lesbian, no, oh, I don't want to read that. The word lesbian. <laughs> I was going to say, be careful, comes literally up. Literally means resident of the Isle of Lesbos. Yeah, the word right. lesbian means yeah. resident of the Isle of Lesbos. Yeah. Right. And if I That's remember exciting. from Odyssey, like they were like living in joy and oh, the happiness. Oh, the term, sorry to interrupt you. No, no. no it says yeah. here, the term came to describe women who love women after the island's most famous resident, the poet Sappho. Oh, yeah. Sappho, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, there you go. <clears throat> wow. So you, you know, learn, you, you learn something. You learn so something means, new every day. So that <laughs> means only only uh, gay women from the Isle of Lesbos are, true are actually yeah. lesbians. It's like and then it's like champagne. Else is just like sparkling gay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not a real lesbian if yeah. you're actually from Greece. Exactly. You have to be from the Isle of Lesbos <laughs> to be a real lesbian. It's, you're only a lesbian if you're actually uh, born and raised in the island of Lesbos. Otherwise, it's just sparkling gay. <laughs> to say your joke again. Uh, all right. <laughs> F.S. Claire <laughs> says, once you realize that America is now a Soviet state, none of what the system is doing to Trump is surprising. If you think it's bad now, just wait. The show is just getting started. These black pilled no, people. No, uh, the show could be coming to an end, honestly. The night is always darkest for the dawn. And uh, the assumption and the hope is that we are in the dark, darkest portion of night. The black pilled people assume it's not yet nighttime. That may be the case. 
Michael Malice often brings this point up that it's not it, it, it could be so much worse. You don't realize. I, so perhaps I get the black pill, man. But I feel like we have self-control and free will. Like destiny is part of it, too. We're being pulled along. But like you have the free will to say white pill stuff, even if you don't. It doesn't feel good because sometimes you're just addicted to your past emotions and like you got to twist yourself into the light. All right. Vosh says you are wrong. Those private companies might as well be nationalized already with the amount of regulation and permission they have to have from the Fed to manufacture those weapons. No, sir, you are wrong. Those companies run the Feds and the system. I don't I, I, I'm not. The, I, I do not believe that the uh, uh, look, the CIA contracts out to private corporations. Edward Snowden wasn't working for the CIA. He was a contractor. The government takes your money, gives it to private entities who then run the show. That's the creepy thing about it. And often one point that I, I dispute, but many people bring up is that the Federal Reserve is a private institution. So I disagree. I think in reality, our government is controlled by special interests. The government has its degree of control that it can influence over private institutions. So there is a bit of a double edged sword there. But my point is the military industrial complex is running the show. That There you go. Sure, they need federal, you know, permissions and stuff, but it's permissions they decide on and they have stock and they make money and they they're the reason why we have wars and all this stuff. They support the politicians who will fund them and give them what they want. And the only regulations that exist are the ones that they're OK with. Yeah. You know, for the most part, for the most part. Alpha Turkey says Zola's algorithm, a Marvel reference. Zola in uh, this was what Captain America 2. I don't know where the Nazi, the Hydra scientist, not Nazi, but former Nazi Hydra scientist creates an algorithm that will track down through AI all of the undesirables and execute them in an instant using gunships in the sky. Yep. That's, That's creepy. That full spectrum dominance. That's apparently what this power structure is seeking. Nathan Rayner says, Tim, you are wrong. My wife makes the best cookies ever with no salt. Yes, there are cookie recipes that don't have salt. My point is. Typically, baked goods will have salt in them to some degree. When I was a little kid, I remember when I was baking cookies for the first time and my mom explained we were now going to add the salt. And I was like, what? Why? Because I did not understand. Salt tended to be something you'd put on dinner, like, you know, your, your entree, not your dessert. And then you realize chemical reactions, flavor reactions, etc. You know, I, I'll give you the best example. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Do you guys ever see that show? No. Yep. Mm -mm. The, what, was the, what was the old lady's name in the show? Uh, it's Eustace and Muriel. Muriel yeah. would always say the secret ing ingredient was vinegar. And so it's like putting vinegar in random things. Maybe not true. It was like a cartoon. Eggs. I think so. Right. Yeah, vinegar right. and eggs. Chef Gruel let us yeah. in on a secret. Mm -hmm. Splashing a little vinegar on your eggs. Holy crap. Also different types of vinegar in different ratios, like a little bit of white vinegar. wine vinegar with a little oh, bit yeah. of balsamic and a little bit of rice yeah, wine with like a teriyaki day. vinegar to yeah, finish yeah. it off, you know? Yeah. Oh. So my point is the Malt average vinegar. person doesn't understand why you need to put certain things that you may not like salt in, in food. Yes. Yeah, salt makes sweet stuff less bitter. Less I think bitter, bitter is yep. the right word. Yep. Yeah, I believe so. Like cookies will be a little bitter without salt. Salted caramel is based AF. Oh, it's so good. Right. Yeah. And, and you get these little chalks and they have huge chunks of salt on them. And it's amazing. My point is the average person when asked to vote on it would say, don't put salt in my chocolate. I mean, even chocolate chip cookies, there's like the, the doughy part of it that's not uh -huh. the chocolate part. Like there's a, there's a little bit of a savory flavor. I got, I got, I got to tell you, so if good. you make chocolate chip cookie dough and you don't put salt in it, it is nowhere near Bad. as good. That, that salt makes it pop. Mm. Of course, you want the brown sugar, the butter, the white sugar, you know? I actually like putting Molasses. salt in my water. If you guys ever do that, just like you put salt in Not a ton of it, but yeah, just for electrolytes. Yeah, just, just like, and then just go for it. Yeah. Salt that was imaginary electrolytes. salt, by the way. I don't have any on me. <laughs> True. But there are, there are a lot of things. Here, I'll give you a better example to everybody. Um, if we were to vote on whether or not silencers were dangerous and should be banned, <laughs> guess what happens? <laughs> they get banned because people watch movies and they think silencers go pew, pew, pew. pew, pew. pew, pew. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's democracy. Great. <laughs> so yeah, our man. public is not immune to these problems. You got to know the secrets to get the pew, pew ones. <laughs> I've seen some pretty impressive ones, but they're more like a snap. Yeah. And it's not a bang. Yeah. And they're really quiet. It's impressive. I would say the average person who's not heard the sound of some of the better suppressors would not know what they were hearing. No. Mm -hmm. But to be Definitely fair, not. I've been in way too many conflict situations with active gunfire where no one knew what was going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My favorite story, of course, is when I was working for Vice and in Ferguson, gunshots went off and I hit the deck 
Everyone else hits the deck, and the camera person goes, oh, "This is fireworks," and that happened more than once. Mm. And I was like, "Do you see anybody with fireworks? No. Do you see people with guns? Yes. What assumption are you going to make?" Wild dude. Apparently, they're going to make the wrong one. <laughs> but to be fair, when I went back with a better producer from Vice. When the gunshots went off and I looked to my right, he was already on the ground. And I'm like, my man. And then I saw a guy from ABC who was walking around confused. And he said, are those fireworks? And I'm like, every single time. <laughs> they don't get it. No, they don't. They hear bangs. They don't understand. Yo, I'm, I'm pretty sure you fire a 22, like a, like a, 20, like a, like, like a Ruger 10 22, the average person is not going to recognize the sound. Yeah. They don't know what it sounds like. They hear movies and they hear boom, boom, boom. Right. Then they hear a 10 22 and they're thinking like, is that a mousetrap going off? Yeah. I mean, the sound of a bullet going past you is a really particular sound. You don't really forget that one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That happened to me in Ferguson. It was a whip crack. Yep. Yep. Sounds like that a That was crazy. Yeah. So that speed barrier. Basically. I, I, I just fell on the ground sound and I scraped barrier. my hands up. I When the gunshots rang out and then I just, I, I dropped my body. I yeah. just basically leaned forward and body slammed straight down. The fastest way to go down is to just, just hit the deck. And I scraped my hands and I heard the shit it hit the wall right in front of me. Ferguson was wild, man. People were just shooting. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll grab some more super chats here. We got a big one. Uh, let's see. David Whited said, "What did Brianna learn from Fox that she uses on her show?" So much. Uh, specifically, gosh, um, I'd have to say, well, definitely booking. There's a lot of there's a lot of interesting tactics to to network and to book guests that I've learned, but specifically on the podcast that I'm hosting now we kind of teach people how to like analyze the media a little bit better because most people just kind of like we were discussing earlier just kind of like just take what older generations kind of take whatever is fed to them and they just kind of think it is fox saying it this is great you know during the pandemic i'm not sure if everyone realizes it but the blaze did a great foia request and ultimately what happened is we found out that fox and pretty much all mainstream media outlets took gov took government money from hhs from the biden administration to promote the vaccines and then it led to our coverage being altered and i was there one day when peter navarro's segment was clipped because he said to young people don't take the vaccines because it's a, it's a high risk and you might if you're a healthy person there's no reason to take them and they cut that part out so ultimately i've learned and i've shared with everyone that the the media is easy to buy off obviously even from the government and they will manipulate the facts and they have no issue doing so. Oh yeah, it's bad. Really? But anyway, my friends, we're gonna go to the members only uncensored show. So head over to timcast.com, click join us to become a member and you'll get access to our Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded individuals 24 seven. That's the real benefit of being a member is that before the show, during the show, after the show, everyone's hanging out. There's commentary, there's shows on the Discord that happen all the time. Morning commute shows, after dark, after shows. And as a member who has signed up at TimCast.com for 10 bucks a month, you're not only supporting our ability to do our uh, various shows on the ground, uh, we're going to be planning, we're planning one, I think, for Super Tuesday, likely going to be in West Virginia. Because mm -hmm. we figured uh, if it's everywhere all over the country, let's do a West Virginia one and get people involved. Maybe we'll have something in Martinsburg. Maybe we can, <coughs> I don't know, maybe we, we have our own venue. Maybe we do that. Yeah. That makes sense. We have a building. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's easy. So maybe yeah. maybe that's maybe that's the case. We're like trying to find a venue, and I'm like, we have a building. Let's just let's just roll. Let's let's bring everybody to Martinsburg. That's a good idea. So uh, that would be in Mar on March 5th. Super fun, and uh, we have the mobile equipment. We can definitely pull this off. Yeah. Private. I, I wonder though if like we do it as a private members only thing. So we have to. I think because of uh, regulations on the elevator. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's all possible because you are members. So become a member, and you'll also get to watch the uncensored show coming up in a few minutes, where we are not so family friendly. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL, but follow me personally at Timcast. And, uh, you know, thank you for smashing the like button. Brianna, do you want to shout anything out? No, I just want to shout out uh, everyone who's supporting uh, my new show. We just recently started doing a daily podcast, and I'm just so, so thankful for all of the conservative brands who are supporting us and everyone else who's supporting us by just listening. So uh, that that would be all. I think it's really important for your audience to support independent journalism. It's really the only thing that's going to save this country, unfortunately, because the corporate media is so paid off. And so thank you for everyone who does so, because that's really important. What is the show called? The Brianna Morella Show. It's very unique. Yeah, <laughs> that <title> is. <laughs> How'd you come up with that? Uh, you know, it took a lot of thinking. <laughs> did you patent? Did you take the, the rights? But real, where is it? What, what network? We're, we're just online now. So we're all over Twitter, Rumble, everywhere now. Uh, mm -hmm. They just started doing YouTube. So we just literally launched last week on it as a daily show. What time does your show go live? Before you guys. So it's 7, 7 p.m. Eastern time. 
Yeah. All right. Thanks, yeah. Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love it. I am uh, Phil That Remains on Twix. I am Phil That Remains Official on Instagram. The band is All That Remains. You can follow the band on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Pandora, YouTube, you know, the internet. And I'm Ian Crossland. You are subscribing to me on the internet everywhere at Ian Crossland and enjoying my content. Go check out the Mike McCulloch interview from earlier. Let me know what you thought. And special shout out to Matt Reif, who turned me on to the Royal Reif's technology, this Reif machine. I'm going to go vibrate in the solfeggio frequencies later tonight. I have them all in a loop, a three-minute loop. It just goes up and then starts over and then goes up. It's really nice. Check it out. Ian also has a bunch of crystals, too. Yeah, like, let's see. How, those vibrators. Guy. Wow. <laughs> My plan is to go to the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, go into the king's chamber, lay in the sarcophagus, which was apparently a sensory deprivation tank, and then they vibrate that inner chamber. And then, like George St. Pierre was there with Jimmy Corsetti, and when George was oh, getting he's, vibrated, he's be here on Friday. Jimmy Corsetti's going to be here with Ben, um, freaking so solar wet sun weatherman. Ben, um, how uh, funny would it be if Ian does this, and then his consciousness is transported to like another planet? That would be so awesome. So I want to take these Rife machines into the King's Chamber and vibrate that chamber. Right. And well, I'll let you know when we do. We'll go to the members only show and talk more about yeah, it. Yeah, Serge, what do you think about it? Uh, yeah, stuff still vibrates, bro. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, I'm Serge.com. I hope you guys follow Ian. He puts a lot of stuff out there. Uh, we all do a lot to make this show work. We appreciate you guys coming out to our shows live. Come to West Virginia. It's cool. Yeah, see you later. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com. It'll be up on the front page in a minute or so. Thanks for hanging out.